100,000 on a beat. What's going on, everybody? What's up, fam? What's going on, man? What's up, TD? What up, the I love family? What's up, people? How y'all doing, man? Good evening, oh, Tiger Nation. What's going on, everybody? Uh, appreciate y'all for tuning in, man. Uh, good to be back on. I'm a uh, got a special guest tonight, and um, man, just excited to. To be back on needed a needed a, uh, a, a distraction, bro. Uh, right from the onset, you know, I want to take a couple of minutes, if not a minute or two, just to uh, just address the family, man. Just uh, and just uh, give my uh, sincere appreciation to uh, all of you who support the platform, all of you who um, have been rocking with us since day one. Uh, appreciate you guys, man. You guys held it down. Great show on Monday. Uh, I want to send a, a huge uh, shout out to uh, Seb, Cedric Myers, um, brother, for coming on the platform. I, I hate I didn't get a chance to speak with him, but I did get a chance to talk to him. Uh, we talked to him at the uh, donor reception. Um, but again, I just uh, I appreciate you guys, man, for the uh, support. You know, uh, tough time right now uh, for my family and I, uh, most importantly, um, my sister, I definitely want to continue to um, try to be a just some some form of just stability, man. This is this is uncharted territory for us and and for all of us who are dealing with what we're dealing with. And uh, you know, for those that do know, I'm not going. You know, it's not a doom and gloom thing. It's just a. Um, I, I guess if what if I could say anything, uh, I'll say this, and and we'll move on. Um, Here's what I'm thankful for, because I always try to look for things to be thankful for no matter what, right? I am thankful that my sister didn't have to make the, the call, man, you know, um, the call of deciding whether to choose life or or choose mm -hmm. to move on. Uh, God made that decision. And last time I checked, we don't get a text message or email or even a phone call when God decides to do something with his stuff, because we all his stuff now. You know, and when he do things, uh, you can either accept it or not accept it. Either way, he's still going to do it. You know, his will will run right over you. So um, we're going to get out of it what we should get out of it. I think it will bring my family closer, uh, our family closer, obviously. And it's just a very um, unusual thing. I'm blessed and thankful that I had a chance to spend the day with my daughter yesterday. Just being regular, y'all. You know, y'all got girls just like I do, man. I took my baby. She didn't go to school. We just 
we just kind of meandered a little bit. You know what I mean? So um, went to the mall, man. Didn't buy nothing. But we went to the mall. We was just, you know, just being regular, man. So I was happy for that moment. And um, I would say my family is somewhat at peace for now, you know, because, um, like I said, it was a, it was out of our hands and it was always out of our hands. So uh, we, um, you know, we're going to take it one day at a time. We're going to keep it rolling. Uh, you know me, man. I'm not one to just go crawl under a rock and just stop existing. You know, life got to go on and we got to keep rocking and rolling and, and keep pressing on, man. I have my days. I had a rough day yesterday at the end of the day with her and then you know it is what it is so that's all i got on that right now like i said this is obviously an ongoing thing uh we we looking to uh get some closure within the next week or two uh and we'll move forward man and uh and this goes out for everybody who's lost a loved one uh whether it was recently or um you know whatever you know we got a lot of folks that when you have a big family you got a lot of people that you touch. You tend to come across a lot of people that uh, that gets touched by mortality. And uh, we've all felt that way. We've all, um, you know, been affected in some way, shape, form, or fashion. So uh, it was good to step away. Uh, it was a shock. I was, uh, you know, trying to get home and 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 just it, it made sense to stay put. So. Anywho, let's get it rock. Let's get the show rocking and rolling, man. We got a few minutes. Uh, we got a special guest tonight, y'all. In case y'all ain't been paying no attention, uh, for those that don't know, if you if you if you're not on social media, if you haven't seen it, uh, we're excited to bring on head coach Mo Williams. We got Coach Mo Williams joining us tonight, um, and we hope to show him the same love we showed Coach Tamika Reed when we had her on. And um, I appreciate Coach for for definitely uh, accepting the invitation and. Um, and coming up to talk about his program, talk to us about some of the stuff Zoe and I and and, uh, and D'Angelo had a chance to uh, gain from him when uh, we were at the uh, Golf Classic uh, this past week and um, had a lot to say. So, you know, I felt like what better place to be than, you know, on the platform, have him come up here and talk to us about you know, some of the stuff that he was talking, he got a lot that he got going on, a lot that he's doing, man. A lot of things I'm excited about. I'm excited for him about, and I'm excited to hear him talk about. Uh, so I won't try to get into any of the preliminaries other than this. Just kind of wanted to open up and give my little tidbit. And uh, if something comes to mind, you know, uh, I'm going to be free with it, man. If something comes up, I'll speak on it. But that's all I got, man. Uh, how about you guys, man? Oh, I was waiting on TV. Yeah, man, I'm actually, uh, can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. All right. <clears throat> now, man, I'm uh, excited about this show. Again, we can kind of pull the curtain back a little bit. You know, uh, obviously, you know, we've talked to him on quite a few occasions, even as, as soon as last week, but we get to pull the curtain back for, you know, for you guys and, you know, bring the fan, you know what I'm saying, and the fan base and the alums behind the curtain to get a, a, a different viewpoint of what we are with the state of the uh, men's basketball program. I think you guys are going to be, uh, you know, uh, amazed at, you know, what we are, what the players are, you know, and how we um, look to move forward, you know, with men's basketball program. There's an actual, you know, plan in place of, you know, what we're what the goals are and what we're trying to get to. Uh, and, and not just from a win-loss perspective, but the overall identity of the program and just the perception of the program and just to win and succeed. And, um, you know, uh, Coach Mo is uh, making some good moves, uh, really, really good moves. And it's going to be good to hear from him, especially on this platform. Uh, and again, I always ask you guys, man, who got it better than us? We always say nobody, but it's not just a quote. We show it day in and day out. You know, you see it through this platform. What other HBCU is giving you this? What other HBCU you allow you guys to have access to even do what we're doing? And so, again, it's just Jackson State, you know, being the uh, – the rising tide that lifts all boats in this HBCU lands in, in, in this HBCU landscape. So, just being who we are, doing what we do, and so, uh, like I said, looking forward to having them on, man. I can't uh, can't wait to bring on old Peanut. And let you guys uh, ask some questions, man. Get a feel and get filled in this evening. See, you got anything before we go, before we jumps on? Yeah, I just want to say good evening again to everyone. Um, 
you know, shout out to you for your trust in Zoe and I to hold down the show. And Rochelle came up and joined us uh, on Monday night. You know, um, Joe did Joe did a good job of hosting, and um, we took care of the guests the best we could. Appreciate the support of Tiger Nation for coming in and still rocking with us. So um, I think everything has been said, man. You know, still many prayers to you know uh, to you and your family. Uh, so you know, you guys have already spoke on Coach Mo, and we're looking forward to having him up. That being said, I'm ready to rock and roll. Yeah, man, uh, I got to get my take on the uh, spring game as well. I didn't get a chance to talk oh, about it. That's right. Yeah, man, we're going we gonna to revisit that a little bit. Um, we got a, um, got a new sponsor, man. New channel sponsor, new partner. Uh, I'm excited about that. You know, shout out to a uh, new channel sponsor. I'll go ahead and throw that up there. We got a new channel sponsor. Shout out X, man, out of Memphis, Tennessee. Another oh, alum. Uh, compliments from... Big homie, KT Dub, man, you know, uh, shout out to Dr. Ted. Uh, we did talk about this. Um, we did talk about this a little while ago. And one of the things I, I wanted to do is we needed to meet and have a conversation and we got a chance to meet. Uh, I'll go ahead and just put this out there. Dr. Ted is actually going to be, um, he's actually going to be um, adding three new interns, three new interns to his uh, internship program, and um, we're going to cover that. We're going to partner with him to make sure that that's covered. Um, and we got some great ideas when it comes to that. And then I, I will say this, too. Uh, we're actually going to do it at, at three. We're going to pick three games this season, this football season, to actually um, announce those uh, internships. We're talking $10,000 internships for uh, for student at, students. Uh, and this is not – we always talking about JSU sports, but – Jack State is more than just sports, man. It's academic, academia, right? You got regular students out there in the health science department, you know, and those that, you know, the department that gave him his opportunity and uh, he want to give back. He's been, he's, he's already been doing it. He's looking to expand that and looking for us to partner and help uh, with that. Uh, and with this comes a, obviously, a, 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 a pretty um, appreciable uh, donation to the foundation. We appreciate Dr. Ted for that. And we look forward to that. Uh, yeah, that's not only is it not only is he giving um, a ten thousand dollar internship to three different Jackson State students, but he's also going to donate a thousand dollars to the institution to a, a student um, at an at the at an institution at the institution that we're playing on that day. So uh, we get to pick those games. Uh, we already have picked Texas Southern for one. Um, and then we also uh, we're gonna pick Southern Southern University that got that game. So we're gonna do two home games and one away game. Uh, just kind of a little people under the tent. I'm excited about this and uh, just another striving into the next uh, level in which we're trying to take this platform and really grow it. And the way we do that is by partnering with our other. We got a lot of alums that's doing some amazing things, man. That's out there, you know. So and, and we also have. Uh, I'll, I'll say this. Uh, he contacted another uh, medical professional from the from Southern, and they was like, hey, you know what? I tell you what, I'm going to do the same thing. We'll do it for two. So at the same time, when we're playing a, you know, a rivalry football game, we're going to be looking to bless some students, you know what I mean, uh, during that time in our partnership with Shot RX and KC1400, man. So we're looking to definitely um, take this thing to the next level. And I think the other game that we were looking at uh, was uh, probably homecoming. So – uh, that'd probably be UAPB. Uh, okay. Yeah, if you have to. Uh, Joe, you dealing with that weather that we were dealing with last night, huh? <laughs> yeah, man. This weather done got crazy, man. So if you have to. I, 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 if you had noticed, I mean, to cut you off, but I'm, I've been muted the whole time because it's that loud. Yeah. Man, you uh, check out your whatchamacallit, man. Check out your, uh, your weather report. And uh, hey, Mario, I appreciate it, man. Hey, listen, brother, I, I'm telling you, man, I'm so pumped up and excited about this opportunity to do this. Um, we're looking to uh, have some conversations with the president and at the university. And we're looking to do some major things, man. We're not just looking to just talk sports. Uh, we're looking to really bless some students with uh, with, with three uh, $10,000 opportunities. And we're actually going to we may bring them on. Uh, if not, we'll cover them. And we'll sit down and we'll interview with those students and we'll talk about their experience, man. 
and they'll be uh not only when they go and take this internship they'll be able to leave with something you know they go for the summer td and they they, they not only get paid but they leave with a skill whether it be uh licensed and, and they, they'll be certified in phlebotomy you know what i'm saying i mean all different levels of it but uh we got coach mo he getting ready to pop up on this thing i wanted to just introduce you guys to that real quick hey, and, uh, go ahead brother <clears throat> oh, you know, we're missing the weather, man. Let me uh, let me do this real quick before we bring up mode. You know, I pray that everyone, you know, survive the storm safe. You know what I'm saying? You had any issue and damage to your house. You know, you you know, they're just getting taken care of. Shout out to uh, KT Dove. I know he, you know, he, he was without lights. So, um, yep, yep. you know, he was looking to uh, to find refuge. So, you know, my prayers, hope, hope everybody made it through safe. Absolutely, brother. I, I appreciate that, TD. Um, and uh, yeah. Everybody stay safe, man. If, if and hopefully no one is uh has had to deal with uh too much. Uh but without further ado, as we stated, we got our head coach, uh men's basketball coach Mo Williams joining us tonight. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and add him up to the platform. And uh there he is. Coach. Hey, what's going on, fellas? You guys can hear me well. Yes, sir. That's fine, man. We hey, 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 listen, I, I hey listen, I want to apologize first off. I usually have a nice little setup. You know, got dressed, but I've been working, man. I've been on this phone, so I'm on my phone. Um, and when I get off with you guys, I'm gonna get on. I gotta get back on another call. So mm -hmm. that's rock and roll, man. I'm here for y'all. Hey, listen, we are here for you. You know, uh, hey, listen, you ain't got to apologize about work. You, hey, we was excited when we talked to you at the golf uh, classic, man, with all the stuff that you're doing. And I just was like, man, what, uh, what a great opportunity to be, man, to put you in front of, you know, the family. And uh, like I said, we get a few thousand that catch these videos, man. And uh, that's right. It goes from there. But um, we we had Coach Reed on, and we definitely we always like to spread the love, man. We don't we don't show biases on the channel, and um, you know we we respect the heck out of you, and we we love what you're doing and got brewing, and we wanted to give you an opportunity to come on and let's let's talk about what we uh, what we talked about and expand it a little bit further, man. So. Without further ado, we'll just let you start it off. It's your show uh, to really just speak to the family, and um, you you can open it up. However, we got some questions, of course, and and we'll, we'll absolutely. We'll... Yes, sir. No, um, no, for sure. Listen, um, first of all, I couldn't be more proud of our group um, of people that support our program and understanding on the next step of what we need to do to continue to grow and continue to. Uh, build toward championships and obviously change with the times and understand uh, what's going on. And I know people hear the NIL name uh, or letters and, uh, and and think they understand exactly what that entails, but you only have um, the slightest um, clue. But we're, we're here. Um, we understand it. This thing is fairly new, but it's taken off to a level where uh, I don't think no one – um saw um but it is you look at calipari you know leaving kentucky yep. for arkansas and he has access to more nil money five million dollars i mean you yep. know so so that that kind of puts in perspective so now we see that at the forefront you know and we we had our conversation before this even happened so now you can just see it from the forefront and understand you got to think um when, when you're us, when you're here at Jackson State, guys, we're competing for the same championship that team competes for. Mm. You know, we're, we're, we're trying to get to the same tournament that they're trying to get to. Right. So understand there are our opponents. So when we talk about non-conference games that we're playing this year, which is the likes of Houston, Alabama, mm -hmm. you know, uh, just to name a couple teams that's on our schedule this year those are two teams obviously one has been in the fight of four and one obviously was number one all season long so those are the teams that we're competing with mm. you know the the arkansas you know all those type of teams so understand when you come from a situation like we have here at jackson state where we have zero we're, we're competing against a school that has five million so understand that we don't need five million because we're not arkansas just imagine what we can do with two hundred and fifty thousand. so now two hundred fifty thousand don't sound as much yeah 
You get what I'm saying? So understand, when we say 250000 the first dollar, man, that's a lot of money, man. Not really. Mm -hmm. But you got to understand the caliber player that you need to get and compete at your level and understand on how you can compete and win championships at your level and understand that those players are, are going to go to Arkansas. But you have a pool of players that you can attract here at Jackson State. But you have to have skin in the game. Mm. You have to have some – you have to be in that NIL space. I recruit – I was on the phone before I got on with you guys. I'm going to get on the phone um, after you guys. And these kids want to know about our collective, want to know about the NIL space. Yes. And that's one thing that we're building. Um, I've had um, numerous conversations with people, including yourself. Um, we've gotten quite a number of people on board. You know, we're at $75,000 um, as a date, and um, those guys just started raising that, uh, you know, less than a month. Yeah. And we're now, um, with your platform, getting the word out. You know, this is just a select uh, few of guys that got together and started this thing. Now we want to open this thing up and get people to understand uh, – that we can only grow as 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 far as you take us. You know, we go raise five hundred thousand dollars. Now we're talking about something really, really special. You know, we're talking about something really, really special. So I challenge us. Um, I challenge people to understand um, the magnitude of this. You can get. I tell people all the time. Um, is it, you can do a lot of things together more so than a few, and. <clears throat> If you go get one person and that one person say, I'm going to get nine other people and I'm going to get $1,000 out of my life for a year and us 10, we're going to make sure as this group of 10 of us, we're going to make sure we donate 10,000 this collective and you times that times 50 people. Yeah. With a group of 10. And you understand the magnitude of what that will, will, will do. And we think about Arkansas, for example, and when you say 5 million, that ain't one person giving them $5 million. Not at all. It's Not a that. collective. Yep. So it's plenty businesses, 20 grand here, 100 grand here, 50 grand here, 300,000 here. You know, okay, you got your big fish, $1 million. Okay, then you got 75. It's a collective. Mm -hmm. So, so Coach Mo, let me ask you this real quick, brother. What would you say to those who waiting on – to see a dominant team, a, uh, um, a dominant performance, a um, winning season, everything before they start to donate. What would you say to that, those? I mean, that's that's fine too. I mean, that that's going to come. In, um, we that's going to come. We've had winning seasons when we talk about conference play. I don't really consider uh, our non-conference. You know, we really don't look at that no. in in the aspect of how we judge our season. Um, no, no, no. Just what to I'm answer saying, your question, you know, as far as winning season, so just uh, just answer your question. So we consider what we've done the last two years as being competitive and having a winning season. But what we want to do is win championships. That's my only goal. Yes, I'm mm -hmm. happy we had winning season. I'm I'm happy we pulled out some games and we could get into the nitty gritty on just the injury bug we had last year and still won. Just as many games we won year one. Um, going into this season, where <clears throat> far as this is really my first recruiting class. This is really my first recruiting class. The guys that I had, Ken, um, Colty, those guys um uh, were already here. Um, Coach Brent recruited those guys. I brought in pieces around those guys. Now I'm bringing in the future. I'm bringing in guys that's going to really uh, help build this, this program, help mold this program into something really special. Mm -hmm. um, so when I say <clears throat> do, do I need to win and be dominant to get people on board, absolutely right. That's exactly what I'm going to do. That's exactly what I'm building to do. But I have enough people – <clears throat> that's already supporting and already want to support for me to get there. And all I got to do is get there and win it. Then everybody else will come on board. Right. That's okay. 
that's 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 just how it that's just how it is. Uh, when Mustenberg went to Arkansas, they didn't have five million for him. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was just that was just five years ago. Right. But it's Calipari. You damn yeah. right we have five million for him. Right. And we're gonna try to double it in five years. And 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 if you watch the press conference, now all of a sudden they finna remodel the whole Bud Walton arena. Yep. Yeah. They didn't do that five years ago. <laughs> this is the same AD. Right. So understanding, I understand that platform. It's only my third season. But I'm trying to get people to understand if we want to build sustainability. Yes, I can go out and go get a bunch of transfers and, you know, uh, may have some some kind of issue that I have to deal with because if they didn't have an issue, they'll go get 50000 from somewhere else. So to try to win one year instead of building something and how you build something when you have something in place. And when you start to build and you have things in place, and you have things for players. This is a, a player driven um, collegiate level that we uh, level field that we're playing on right now. Well, and like it's all that. about the players. So I we like got to make sure we understand. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, my bad. I was going to say, I like the fact that you actually mentioned what I would like to think more is the floor by saying 200,000, but then you changed it saying doubling that, you know what I'm saying, to possibly even 500,000. So let it be exactly. known, even like now, when we talk about NIL, when we talk about basically we're setting, this is new, we're setting the floor now. So the standard and the floor which we're setting is 200000 But we're not saying that's that's the ceiling. That's just the starting point. That's just to get us in the game to get what we need to be, to get what we need to get to. So the floor is 200000 and need be, we want to raise that as high as it can actually go. I, I want to exactly. add, I want to add one thing to that, Coach, because uh, we, we've done a, a, a little bit in this space, I just want to reiterate the fact that when, when you're talking about 10 guys agreeing to give a thousand dollars in my, this is our 10. We going to coach Mo is talking about consistently annually. It's not just a one-time thing. And I think what happens sometimes with, with us, this is new. This is not JSU NAA. This is not donations to the school. Continue to do all of that. Don't stop doing what you do. But we're talking about additional, a whole different mindset, a whole different thing. And I just wanted to reiterate the fact, uh, Coach, that it's an annual thing because what will happen is, is that folks say, oh, you just want 1000 Okay, cool. I gave 1000 But then it's like, okay, there's another season coming behind that and another season and another recruiting class. And it's just a commitment to say, you know what? Hey, we got 10. And that's what I told you. You know, when we talk, I won't go into that just yet, but I, I wanted to uh, just kind of reiterate that for some of our listeners because we're having to educate our people on this. And I, I mean that. It's, 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 it's We got to get in the game. I love the fact that you got something brewing. I, I would like to, I guess, just try to, for the sake of uh, those who may want to support it, is um, what would be the best method of communication to try to figure out how to, access that because what you're doing is is not necessarily what you're doing but but what you're speaking to is uh is a is a collective uh for your prospective team and i think what i would just suggest is just uh more communication as far as how how you guys want to do it if you just want to take a grassroots approach uh we can share information however i just wanted to just kind of put that out there with that but i'll let you i'll definitely so 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 for one i i can't give you i don't know that information because right. that information is not controlled by me. Absolutely. Um, neither neither the school. So like I have right. no idea of how it's set up. I just know it is set up. Uh, and it's set up through an attorney. It's through uh, just like you guys, boosters yep. that support the program. Has nothing to do with myself. I don't handle it. I don't. All I do is go recruit a kid and say, our collective, you're going to talk to the collective. I'm going to talk to the collective and say, hey, this is what we're offering this kid to come play here at JSU. And the collective handles the rest. Uh, Tundy Wade, Tundy Wade is our uh, is the lawyer, attorney, booster, big time uh, oh, yeah. uh, fan. Obviously, he's the person to contact uh, Ken. You have his information and yep. you definitely can get it if you don't. Just make sure you share with the viewers 
get him on, get him on, yeah, and just let him – because yeah. because it's not me. No, I'm no, no. just not, really I, being – I'm just yeah, really yeah. being the voice of stressing um, of the importance of it. Totally. You, you know what I mean? Because totally. it's, 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 it's just – for for one for one, I want people to understand it, it does two things. It helps you get players, but it also helps you retain players. That's correct. You know, so we we have a player of the year with one year left from Jackson, Mississippi, from Jackson, born and raised, mm-hmm. but we don't have no money to pay this kid, and he's getting calls by you know Georgetown and um, Kansas State and Mississippi State. He getting all these calls, yeah. and um, and they're not calling and saying that they want him to come play for free. So <clears throat> that hurts us when we don't have the opportunity um, to retain our guys like that once we build them up. And that's going to be the name of the game. Um, you saw Josh Hubbard at yep. Mississippi State had a tremendous year. They got that deal done pretty quick. <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> right. You you look at the the Houston Q- Cougars. You look at their Crowler, uh, b- the big boy Francis Sneed. It won. Sne- it won. It won two days after they was done. Run it back. Guess what? They didn't take long to get their deal done. Yeah. So they have a good collector. Where okay, season over with. We want him back. We don't want. What do you want? What do you need? And they take care of their players. And we're in a social media world. And if you're a player at Jackson State and you're averaging 16 points, 17 points, you own an all-conference team, and you're you're seeing guys out here getting uh, um, NIL money at other spaces, you, you're going to honestly all, automatically assume that you can get the same. And all it takes is one person in the neighborhood to tell you you can. Yep. You know, and there you go. They in the transfer portal. So, um, and and it's and it's a it's a <clears throat> it's a gift and a curse because you know you lose quality players you have, and they end up not getting what they really think they that's out there for them. So you actually lose players that you can retain without even dealing with that. Um, so it, it makes our job a lot easier. And as fans, you got to understand that if we're not in the NIL space, uh, we're going to continue to lose players uh, because of the fact that if we're winning basketball games, um, schools are in the transfer portal look for, looking for players that that um, coming from winning programs. So it, it's going to be tough to retain them. But at the same time, when you build some guys up and you retain some um, <clears throat> and, and some guys transfer out, you definitely want to have something where you can bring some some equal quality of talent back in um, that you that you're losing. So, but the beauty of that, guys, I, I will explain this to you too. It, it's 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 about nil. Um, nil is important, but you you can't get away from you know building kids up. You know, yep. getting them when right out of high school and and understanding on just how to develop, just spending time developing kids. And even if those kids, um, you build them up in two years, because they say the same, everybody, well, you know, you're going to build them, they're going to leave. I mean, if you, it doesn't matter, guy. It don't matter, you know, because at the end of the day, if you build a freshman up, a sophomore up, and they transfer and they go to a bigger school because they was talented coming in because you're getting a high school kid nowadays because of all these colleges, you look at Calipari, I'm talking about the king of the one and done, the king of going getting all the high school players. Listen to his press conference. He talking about getting older kids. Yep. Older kids. So from a mindset of understanding on approach, I'm not begging for money. I don't need a million dollars. I don't need – just give me a little bit to retain a few players. But I'm going to go get some young players that I'm going to develop. They're going to be ready to go as freshmen and damn sure ready to go as sophomores. Mm-hmm. And, and if they have the opportunity to transfer, I'm going to go get another hell of a high school kid that can come in right away and play because mm-hmm. those kids are getting looked over. You got to spend time scouting these kids. You got to spend time 
talking to these kids, communicating with these kids, getting to know these kids, understanding these kids' mindset. Mindset is everything. Mindset is everything and anything that you do. It's about your approach to anything. So when I talk, I personally, as a coach, I talk to these kids. I recruit these kids because I want to understand their mindset because I know my mindset. And as a developer, if we on we ain't on the same way, I can't coach you anyway. Mm. So first, I recruit the mindset. Then I can worry about the talent because they already going to be talented because I'm recruiting them. So if a kid is talented, sometimes I won't deal with them because their mindset. If your mindset there and you need some room to develop, you're going to get there quicker. And I know which way to get there. I know I understand that aspect. And then you mix in one or two transfers in there mm -hmm. that's older, but that, that can be a real big piece. You don't want to really depend on the freshman. You want them to just kind of show up and be a star in their role. And, and if they are, you really got you one. But you definitely want to sprinkle in some nice transfer, but you want to build a group up. And you build a group up, and they love playing for you. Yeah, they make them go to Middle Tennessee, Tennessee State for 50, but they stand here for 20 because they understand the development. They're going to love playing for me. They ain't worried about all the bells and whistles. I don't sell the bells and whistles. I don't, I don't sell that. I know how to recruit where I'm at. I don't lie to kids. I tell them straight up. I don't know if you're going to play. I don't know if you're going to start. I don't know how many shots you're going to damn get. <laughs> so you can listen to all the other coaches that telling you're going to start, you're going to play, you're going to do this, and go there and be in a transfer portal, and I'll be recruiting you again. I'm just letting you know. I don't know. You come in here and you do what I expect and envision you what you're going to do. Well, I, I got a feeling you're going to play. But that part is on you. So, so coach, let me let me jump in here real quick. Since we um, and we'll we'll come back to the NIL stuff if we need to. Let's talk about you. Since you're talking about recruiting of kids, man, you you got some stellar recruits, man, out of the state of Mississippi, which we're excited about. Three of the top ten players in the state. I mean, we just yes, had sir. A, two of the top monster, five, by the way. Two of the, <laughs> had a monster uh, uh, commitment uh, from uh, the number two player in the state out of Pasco yep. High School. Uh, Mr. Dorian, Mr. Mr. Six A basketball, Dorian McMillan, and then right. of course uh, the number four player, Tamari and Hoover out of Old Spank out of uh, Yazoo City, and, and then Spank. had uh, had old Ebo, Ebo Wilson, six ten out of Richmond. Right. And so that's right. Let's talk about these 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 freshmen, man, that you got coming. Absolutely, out of I mean, and, I'm uh, excited. I'm excited about our freshmen. Uh, I kind of go back to when I could when I took the job. Like you got to realize, like. Ken played for me for two years. Coach played me for for me for two years. Um, they was both sophomores. Just Ken was older, but he's just really a sophomore on the court. Mm -hmm. uh, but but Coach was a true sophomore. They really didn't play as a freshman. Um, Zeke was a sophomore. Uh, just one year at, at Northeast, where well, he had a COVID year, but he was a sophomore. So we was actually pretty young. That that group won twelve games, and we was pretty young. Um, Romeo was on that team, um, and obviously Chase on that team. Um, so we was young, two juniors and three sophomores. Okay. And Colty, that was the first time he actually really played, played a lot in college. And Ken kind of was in, you know, get coming into his own, but wasn't really there, not like he was this year. So when I look at these freshmen and just seeing how Ken developed, how Colty developed, Mm -hmm. You know, how Zeke developed, you know, and I, and I just look at, you know, those guys. Uh, and, and when you look at when – and those all three of those guys from Mississippi I just named, but none of those three guys had the accolades these guys had coming in from Mississippi to Jackson State, directly to Jackson State. Typically, these three guys in the state of Mississippi be in Southern Miss, you know, Tulane, you know, Middle Tennessee State. Mm -hmm. uh, Dorian was getting calls from, you know, as high as Florida State and Mississippi State, all that. And um, so I'm excited about these three freshmen. You know, when these are three freshmen where, as a coach, you have a vision of them getting minutes as a freshman. You have a vision of them helping you as a freshman. You know, you can have freshmen come in like, I, ain't, I don't expect him to play this year. I mean, he may red shirt. Like, I have a vision of all three of these guys coming in, starting with Ebo. 
Um, big body. Uh, obviously, you guys are familiar with, with Big Trail. You know, just a trail size body, but, you know, but right now, you know what I mean? Just big, just just strong, just, you know, um, but a lot of room for, for growth. You know, he's just, you know, 18 years old. So just it's no telling what he'll be as a sophomore, mm -hmm. you know. So for us, and then just getting getting back up minutes, you know, from 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 a transfer that we'll bring in where he don't have to um, so much is asked upon him as a freshman. So you understand how you recruit with these freshmen. Then you go to the spank man. We signed them early. Um, just him coming from the system he come from. The um, you know, coach do a great job over there. Yeah, Zoo. Uh, I, I like watching him coach, uh, Carlisle, <clears throat> Coach Carlisle. And he come from a system. He know how to run a system. He has a high basketball IQ. Mm -hmm. So that translates to, from high school to Division One level. He can shoot the piss out the ball, which we needed shooting. Um, he can shoot. He's 6'4", he long, athletic, he can rebound, he's athletic. And he's just a freshman. So just imagine where he'll be as his sophomore year when he get a year experience once. Once I take him to Houston and and, and one of them elbow him in his mouth and he still got to finish the game because they playing so damn hard. So he'll be ready by – them freshmen will be ready by conference play. So don't look at the TV or when you're watching us in the non-conference, like, man, these freshmen, these freshmen, I promise you, you're going to be excited for these freshmen. Um, and then Dorian. <clears throat> and it's it's funny that that I was able to uh, get a commitment from the kid because I remember just watching them and recruiting them early on. I got so many people coming back to me saying, "Oh man, yeah, Jack stayed out. Nah, man, he he looking at you know LSU and Florida State and you know Alabama, Mississippi State, like uh, you know whatever." So I just kind of just stayed around. Stayed around, kept a good eye on him, and I just felt, you know, the need to call, you know, and have a conversation with him and kind of see where his head went. And that just fast forward, you know, um, came to a visit to the campus. You know, they came down, him and his mom, and we just chopped it up and kind of gave my vision to him and told him how I think he can be successful, you know, at this program. Um, playing for me and understanding that um, he has an opportunity to be really, really good and he needs someone someone to believe in him, someone to give him that opportunity. So, you know, our three freshmen, man, we we are extremely uh, excited about this this recruiting class. Like I said, this this feels like my first really, really recruiting class because I'm because I'm able to go out and get six or seven guys, you know, six, or seven guys that I'm actually recruiting. Um, actually going to get and building with those guys. Obviously, we have Deshaun coming back. Obviously, we have um, Nooney, um, what Jamie Mitchell coming back, we call Nooney. Mm -hmm. Romel Manziel, um, to name a few. I'm excited about those guys. Then we got Keevy Hunt coming back. So we have a good nucleus of guys that's returning. I, I joke uh, about this, but I remember one game at home, you know, I'm looking at my bench, and then I'm looking down the sideline at the guys in street clothes. And I turn to Coach Trey. I said, Shh, it's a damn coat. I mean, looking down on the sideline, I don't know which team will win. You know, you had Deshaun, Romel, uh, Dreek Sammy. You got Jamie Mitchell. All them guys sitting on the side. Keith Johnson. Yeah. Was... Keith Johnson was out. I'm like, I don't know which who will win. You know, the game and that lets you know how much talent we just had out. And um so I'm excited about this group that we have. I'm really excited. And you know, last year, um, if we had the group intact, we had a championship group. I said it, um, I was confident about it, I meant it. Um, but at the end of the day, this year, this group right here will be one of those groups that I think that we'll remember because the way we build it and the way that we coming about it, we putting a, a great group together more so than to just a, a, a accumulating talent. You know, we putting a great group together that understands exactly what it's going to take um, or need from them rather for us to be successful each and every day and each and every night. So this recruiting process has been 
it's been fun. You know, it's 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 been a lot of um long long conversations on the phone a lot, but it's it's been worth every second of it because I I know what the outcome will be um, from this and understanding. And, and, and listen, y'all got me on on the podcast at the right time because I'm in talking mode. I'm recruit. I'm in recruiting mode, so yeah. I'm gonna talk a lot. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna stress a lot. I'm gonna preach a lot. I'm gonna sell a lot, and I'm gonna uh, explain to you just how we are successful because people don't realize. People love. We in a result business. We in a result business. People don't understand or give a damn what it take for you to get there. They just care about it. Did you win or damn? Did you lose? Uh, right. So right. for me, I understand that. So I don't, I don't care about hey, hey, people understanding this side. I just know what it takes to get get it done. And go ahead, hey coach. I want, I want, I want to uh, back up a little. Uh, we have a um, little fire watching, and and I want, I want to go back to for the, like the fans, the people who watching who don't know, you know, uh, Coach Mo for who he is. Uh, so we know we we know about your uh, extensive uh, NBA career, and then you know we know you got into coaching. Uh, I think you started out as an assistant, and then you uh, became the head man at uh, Alabama State. My question mm-hmm. is to you: Is what you already had a head coaching job in the swag? What we what brought you to Jackson? You know we, we know yeah. you definitely want to travel. What brought mm-hmm. you to Jackson? What made you come to Jackson State? Well, um, it's home. I'm born and raised in Jackson. My mom and my dad um, and my little brother went to Jackson State. My mom um, actually graduated Jackson State in 1982. I was born in 1982. Me too. Um, so, it, it, I mean, it's, it was just – I mean, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was a no-brainer for me. Um, I'm about building, so – I'm a I'm a winner, man. So so I'm a winner. When I say I'm a winner, like I don't do nothing if I cannot be the best. Like if I can't win a championship, like I don't want to do it. Like I don't. I'm. This is it's not a job to me. Like I want to be the best. I want to talk shit and tell people I'm better than you. You know, um, that's what I want to. That's what I want to do. So it, it's not it's not about it's not about <laughs> it's not about hey, nothing hey, else, hey, man. man. They don't know, Coach. Hey, they, I, hey, you hey, know, we clipping that dog. Hey, it's all good. <laughs> hey, it's all good. Hey, listen, I, I, I gotta say this, man, because I, I just, I witnessed your work ethic. We all knew you were different, bro. And I'm telling you, and I, you know, if you're coaching, you know, what I'm saying approach, and it sounds very similar to that, man. You, you know, yeah. No, nah, listen, Ken, yeah, it ain't know. no magic wand. I don't have no magic wand because I yeah. came here. Playing 14 years in the NBA, McDonald's All American, All American, whatever, whatever, whatever. Like that, that don't mean that don't mean nothing. I got all that because of work. I didn't have no magic wand for that. So if right. I want to be a great coach and instill all this stuff in these guys, like I gotta have the same work ethic. Like I'm, I'm absorbed in this. Like I'm drenched in this. This is what I do from sun up to sundown. You know, um, this is who I am. This is who I embrace. So I only coach players with the same mentality. Like, if you want to smoke, drink, and do other stuff, like, this ain't the place for you. Like, I don't – I this ain't – this just ain't no hangout. Like, you ain't just finna come up here and just be just getting – because you want a D1 scholarship and hoop. Like, nah, we ain't doing that. So um, we talk to these kids. Like, we, we sit on the phone with them and we going to talk. We going to talk basketball. We're going to talk life. Um, I'm going to understand your character. I'm going to understand what moves you, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm going to understand and just listen to you. You're going to tell me who you are. If you about, you know, other stuff and worried about this and that. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clearly see that you worry about the wrong stuff and we don't match. And I'll go elsewhere with my recruiting just like that. So I'm going to have a group of kids that I understand that I can coach that's going to be coachable. But at the end of the day, good enough to win a championship. I ain't. I'm not a choir director either, you know, but at the same time, I'm going to get a group of guys that can come in and compete and win a championship and play together. Hey, Coach, well, I'm going to say something real quick. Hold on real quick, Joe. Ahead. I'm going to just go ahead and put that out there because KB11 just made me say it. Uh, I told Coach at the at the golf tournament that uh, KC1400, we're going to play as that 10,000 to uh, Coach. Uh, not this, not to Coach, but we wherever the hell to the collect. 
Yeah, we exactly. gonna, we, we I'll link you up with them. That's we all gonna, I can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna we gonna definitely do that. So hey family, look, we, we move as a unit over here. So we 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 collecting just like we did uh the other night. The goal is 10k. It, it I don't care if it takes 10 shows to get it, we'll do it. And when we get it, we'll say we got it, and then we'll 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 connect the dots. We got our own collective going on, but one thing okay. we do is collaborate. It don't make no difference what we got going. It ain't no such thing as too much. Exactly. Ain't no such thing as too much now. It, it, it's more that the table is so big, everybody can eat at it. Trust me when I tell you. So uh we got to get out of that mindset of thinking that because somebody doing something, I don't want to do it, or I gotta do it separate. No, we're gonna join what y'all got going on, what they got going on. Not, not you know, you know what I'm trying to say. But I just want to put that out there. So uh when I drop that, donate to the KC 1400 men's basketball donation. We're gonna put that together. And if we have a little extra, we'll donate it to the uh actual uh uh the basketball through the uh through the university. So uh we I didn't want to cut I just wanted to put that out there real quick so folks that are watching to know if you want to donate go ahead and let's get it popping man keep going go ahead go. I, no doubt go ahead I, I was just gonna ask you you know being that you're from Jackson knowing the legacy of uh the talent that actually came through JPS in, in, in the uh the city and also with the success of uh coach Reed on the women's side doing what she's doing with getting a lot of a lot of the local talent and talent from Mississippi with you getting three of the top players in the state Two of the top five. Do you think this changes the landscape of the uh, of JSU consistently now getting the best of the bit of, that the state has to offer? Well, I mean, obviously, you look at um, any in-state school, Jack State, no different. The more people you can get home and stay home that are good, the better. And one thing I can say about our roster, and you look at our roster, it's a lot of Mississippi kids on there. You know, so uh, we pride ourselves on that. Um, it is by design because we actually recruit the state. Um, and we have a model why go out of state and get a player that's sitting right here in your backyard. So um, if we're going out of state, it got to be a difference maker, a Romeo Manziel, a Chase Adams, you know, those yeah. type of guys, a Jordan O'Neal. Um, those guys got to be difference makers. Um, and But you want to obviously recruit the state. And, and anybody that's at – you know, schools that are uh, that did get out the state, and they're from Mississippi. Um, we're, we're as soon as they hit the portal, we we reaching out to them because we want to bring those guys back home. So, and that's the beauty. That's the that's the beauty. So it, it's not a all negative about the transfer portal either. Yeah. You know, it just it gives Absolutely. you an opportunity to go get play. It's so many players out there, so it just gives you the opportunity to go get a piece. You know, it, it, you got to make a lot of phone calls. It, it, it makes your job harder because there's so many phone calls you got to make. But if you work hard enough, you can find that right piece in the portal. And uh, we definitely looking at portal for Mississippi kids. So to answer your question, man, it, it was very important for us uh, to get Mississippi kids. Um, and these three we got, we, we feel real good about. Um, and we felt like, you know, we like more than those three, you know, in the state, you know, but we can't obviously, you know, can't take all the kids and um, just never know down the road. We, we may bounce back to them at some point. Um, but at the end of the day, the three we got, you know, we, we definitely happy with. We understand that they uh, will have to develop and grow, but we feel like their growth will be be pretty fast. That's good stuff, man. Hey, so coach, let me ask you this. Uh, since we uh we're talking about what we can do better, uh, and we'll just say outside of NIL, um, we there's a lot of talk about you know um re-engaging the JSU base, getting the more fans in the in the stands, getting more support. I remember you was very see one thing I love about you, coach, is that you don't show you, you ain't gonna hold back, you're gonna let folks know how you feel. Uh we played a game, what was it at uh Mississippi College or something like that. Not Mississippi College. Mississippi Coliseum. Mississippi Coliseum. And yeah. um, but what we 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 looked like we took a step forward uh from an attendance standpoint. I made a concerted effort to get to a lot more games. Um, I guess the biggest thing would be uh what would you like to see um from a, a JSU fan support standpoint? How would you like to see that manifest itself as opposed to just uh not only the the, the monetary contributions <laughs> and getting active with NIL and really understanding that, but just from a fan itself. More butts in the seats. Uh, kind of speak to your vision as far as what you would like to see with JSU uh, basketball. Well, I don't think it's, it's it's the fans. I think it's again that word collective. You know, mm -hmm. you're stronger together. I think it's I think it's everyone. I think I know it's everyone. No, it ain't just the fans. You gotta 
you have to give fans something to come to. You got to give uh, fans something to come for. Um, so it's a lot of things just on from our side, meaning, uh, you know, if me and basketball win championships, that's one. You know, uh, if we just have some, if we have, we got the scoreboard, but we just keep enhancing the experience. You know, it's to go to a game, you want to give your fans an experience. Yes, they're coming to a game, but they're also coming to an experience. So I think we can get better at that. Um, and obviously, I just think our fans can get better at. Um, I don't. I, I really don't think it's the fans. I think it's us. I think it's us. You know, now that it, when okay. I just think about it, think about it, it's really us. Uh, more so in engaging in the fans and meaning. Mm. I see a lot of people all the time that didn't know we had a game. Mm. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think that's the fans' fault. Yeah, yeah. Speak on it. that's not that's not the fans' fault. You know, so I've seen a bunch of people. Uh, man, I'm coming to a game, man. I'm coming to a game. They have no clue when we play again. Right. You know, so I think if you're in the city um, or you're in the area, you're in the region, it just the things that people want us to buy is always in our face. You know what I mean? It's it's just there. Like I see it all the time. I hear it all the time. And you just happen Great to point. just you, 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 you go to it. Um, so it's our job to bring the fans to us, you know, and you, you do that by having a, a really good program that's competitive, that's giving them something to cheer for every single night. And that's engaging them into bringing them to a, some entertainment not a basketball game. Right. You know, so, and I feel like if it turns into that, it will, turn into something different because at the end of the day when you look at our football games they're packed they're damn near sold out every single game yes it's a football game but it's entertainment they tailgating the mm -hmm. band is they gonna perform at halftime yeah it's gonna be a show you know you you know it's just it's a it's a it's probably half half of the people at the game do not care about what's going on in the game when I was young going to the football games, we spent the whole damn game walking down the uh, in the tunnel and go sit down at halftime. <laughs> right. <laughs> because it was entertainment. Um, until we changed the AAC into entertainment, um, then we, we, we will always have our guy, our fan support that want to come see a basketball game. And, and, and Coach Moore, your answer that the, the answer that you just gave it was the initial question that I was asking. You know, what I'm saying uh, at the beginning. So you, I heard you mentioning a lot of local talent. That pleases me because I speak on that a lot. Because I'm like, if you if you recruiting local, then you getting the the player, fan, family, coaches, former teammates, high school mates to come to the game. So I love that aspect of you. Uh, recruiting locally if you think about it you know you look at the coliseum just just about a month or two ago when you had ken and yazoo playing where well, they packed it out where they won't let no one else in the coliseum right so you want to sell you know um get more bus in the seat sell more season ticket your 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 process and the pro in which you're taking is a uh it's a exact idea of the way you need to go you know, we look back on um, – let's go back to when you first got here when excited. When you got uh, Mr. Ruffin in the house locally, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, people was like, okay, yeah, you know, we got Deshaun Ruffin. And, of course, oh, you know, our spirit was touched when he when the young man got hurt. So we hope that he's re, uh, recovering well. We look to yes, see him he on, is. Yeah, we look to see him on the court, you know, later on this year. So um, – that recruiting locally will, will, will be the key and, and, and keep striving and keep doing it, you know, keep going that route. So can you speak on um, how important having having uh, Deshaun back on the court with the three local players that you got coming in, what kind of uh, electricity would that bring? I mean, I, I, know, the, I know the city is going to be uh, ready for him to play. You know, obviously – he was a big fish. Um, I don't know if people understand this, that 
with Deshaun, I mean, obviously because he missed all year and it, it's kind of been old news, a year old. But it's going to be big time when he put that jersey on because he's the only player um, that has worn a McDonald's All-American jersey that has played in our conference. Mm. Mm. Only person. Wow. You know, so yeah. to understand how – and we don't do enough job of Promoting. highlighting that. Yep. You know what I mean? Because you got to understand, the swag been around for a long time. He's the only – I asked this question when it happened. I kept asking all the coaches. I even called the commissioner and asked them. Nobody could give me an answer. Like, coach, I don't I don't think so. I don't know if any – so I don't think nobody – and I've tried to do the research, can't find anything. So he's the only McDonald's All-American ever to – and he's a Jackson State um, men's basketball player. You know, so we got to understand the magnitude of who we have. So what he's going to bring is a lot of excitement like he did. And understanding that he has a year to rehab, a year of maturity, a year – uh, around me without even playing. So now we're talking, we getting to know each other person because I'm not coaching them. I'm I'm not I'm not able to cuss him out. He don't, you know, he he off me this week because I've been on him too hard. Like we don't have that back and forth relationship that we're gonna have this year. Uh but we we able to just kind of talk and shoot the bull and just kind of understand each other. So that helps. So now when I do get on him, he receive it better. You know, he 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 snap out it quicker. You know, you get more out of him um, because he's he's willing to get coached. So that's the great thing. Uh, I'm excited to coach him, um, you know, and I feel like with him and Romeo, with Romeo being so unselfish and, um, and, and Sean being so dominant and want to go get it, they really complement each other. You know, so now it's about just kind of putting the pieces around him when you got Nooney around him where he really can shoot the piss out the ball, long, athletic, 6'5", 3 and D guy. Then you got Dreek. You got Dreek, 6'4", he really a point forward. So now you got a guy that can actually bring the ball up and handle the ball, make plays where you can where you can kind of put your scores in scoring position. And also you got Keevy. Keevy is in his third year as a junior. He's not a freshman. He's not a sophomore anymore. You know, so he's going to be a lot better um, next year as a junior. You know, so you just go down the line of guys that we have coming back along with the guys that we're recruiting. I mean, we got two visits coming in this weekend. We got two guys coming in Monday. We're going to Memphis on Wednesday. So we're going to bring guys in, the right guys in, you know, um, that can help this group win a championship. That's our only goal. Like I talk about – um, winning and building, but winning the championship is our only goal. So the only guys that we bring in here that have that mindset, we don't care about guys that's coming in here just want to go somewhere and get their numbers and go pro. I could care less about that. Like you got to tell me the right things to come be a part of this. So we we want to uh, get guys about the right thing, about the right mindset. I go well, with you uh, losing a significant portion of your roster uh, so far this year. Are you changing the look of your roster going forward? Say that again. Repeat that. I said, with you losing a significant portion of, uh, of your roster, uh, with the changes now, are you looking to change the look of your roster? Oh, absolutely. Um, um, you, when you when you have opportunities to get better, um, you get better. You know, so for us, it's about getting bigger, getting longer, um, add some shooting. <laughs> so... That that's 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 who that's what we're doing. You know, we're we're recruiting six nine, six tens, and you know they got to tell us no, and um and mm. we'll 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 work from there. I like that. I like that a lot, actually. Coach, let's get into this l- little basketball talk, man. As far as like style of play, man. Um, I, I watching the uh, swag tournament and um, Gremlin Gremlin had a really uh, good run uh, in the tournament and. Um, we we matched up against what Texas Southern, yes. Then, uh, didn't have the success we had. I know you. It's kind of hard to really ask a question, really, but at the same time, we know we had so many out. Um, are you looking to um, make any adjustments to the style of play? I know we shot a lot of three pointers. I, I don't. I don't. I don't know. We just. It, it just. We talked about it, but at the same time, I, I guess my question would be: 
how are you looking to, I, I, I would say, amend maybe your style of play? Are you going to keep the same style of play, the same approach? Uh, are, are you looking to, to add the three ball a little bit more? Or are you looking to just, like, um, play more motion, uh, fast pace? Like, let's talk more about your, your well, – well a, well, a, well, A, you develop a team. You yep. develop a team. Um, and then once I develop my team, I create my style for that particular team. Okay. Um, good. So that's, that's what great coaches do. Um, mm. you understand what you have and you understand what sets and how you need to play. Um, last year we didn't run at all. Um, we played through Romeo, we played through pop, uh, Ken wasn't, didn't get the ball like he got this year. Yeah, uh, we were just kind of a, you know, I, I didn't run really too many plays for him at all. Um, we just played inside and we didn't run because I just didn't feel comfortable with us doing that. Um, but this year, going into this season, you got a Deshaun coming in, obviously. You got Ro. Um, so now you want to open the floor up. You want to get up and down the floor and run. You want to space the floor. You want to do certain things. So now you see how the whole game plan of who you are as a team has changed. Um, so you kind of change with your team. You understand what sets work with guys. You understand what tempo works for guys or with your team or with your unit. So um, how I like to play, I like to get up and down the floor. I, obviously, I like to get the ball across half court in three seconds, like three seconds. That ain't by just getting the ball and running up and down the court. I'm talking about catching it, throwing the ball ahead, getting it up the court, attacking the rim, see what you get early in transition kick it out, let's see what we got, set some up. We might have a quick hit or we might have a set, depending on if we got the lead or not. So you got to understand time situation. You got to understand, do you have a veteran point guard? Um, if you got a veteran point guard, sometimes you let them play. You know, you let them play out of pick and roll a lot. So you can just understand it on, on what you have. And with this year, with so many guys being hurt, and couldn't get scoring from a lot of plays, so we turned into an ISO team. So I had to get the ball in Ken in spots um, because he didn't need to dribble as much. He get in trouble when he dribbled too much, so I want to put him in spots where we got one or two dribbles to go get a bucket um, or get fouled. So we, we became stagnant at a time when he ain't got it going. So you just you, – you understand what it's going to take for you to win. Is it going to be perfect? No, but you're trying to win a basketball game, and the best way to get – best opportunity to get you a win – uh, may may not be a long term solution, but it's gonna win you some games. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and that goes when we play Texas Southern. I, you know, giving him the ball now is playoff basketball. They know all your plays. You ain't catching nobody off guard. So now you got to be special. And if you ain't special at that moment, you you know it, it'll be a tough night for you. So, um, you definitely want to be back. So the the perfect team that you're building. You just get in a situation when you have injuries um, or, or you just don't have enough talent. You know, you just got to come up with something just to win basketball. But to build a championship team, you want to be able to play inside out. You want to be able to have a guy that can go get a bucket for you anytime. You want to have a, somebody on the floor at all times. If he's open, the other team is like, God damn. Right. And you got to have a point guard that understands IQ, understands sets, that, that has a pulse of the team that everybody respects. They listen to him. And he know the plays, he know the sets, and he actually knows what I think, and we get along. Hey, Coach, so Coach, building the team before, before you get it, that's the vision of a championship team. But you don't get the guys that you recruit because you're building a championship team because typically you're not going to be the only coach that want those guys. And if you don't have everything to offer those guys, you're not going to get the same group. So sometimes you deal with a guy that can shoot a little bit. You know what I mean? And, but so you you want to put him in a position to give him all the confidence in the world, and you want him to think he's Ray Allen. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's ways you got to manipulate guys and turn them into something you want them to. Now, will they do it? Mm. Will they be successful or consistent with it? Probably not, but they're going to win some games for you because they, they're delusional. Hey, Coach, you you, you answered a, uh, a bunch of my questions in your speaking because 
I'm not a huge fan of the new game where a lot of you know a, everybody's taking about 103 three pointers a game. You mentioned the inside out game. I, I really like that. Um, I really like that style of basketball. And then, like you said, you definitely need that shooter that's you know that's standing over in the corner when they throw the ball to him. We all met everybody standing up saying, "Hey, that's bucket, that's money." Exactly. And, you know, and nothing but net. So yeah, I, I I definitely love that. So um, so yeah, you asked that question. I wanted to ask you too. I want to ask you real quick. Uh, far as because I I hadn't seen him play really much since high school. Far as Ruffin, is he a is he a, a court general? Or you know he he lead by example, or, or does he take the the reins and you know get everybody in place, you know, or put the team on his back? What type of uh, exactly what type of player is he? I had he'll go up. get him. He'll he'll go get him, man. He he is a, he's a basketball player. Um, he's a player that everybody on the he's a player that everybody respects on the team. Mm -hmm. uh, they know he a dog. They know he gonna go get it. Uh, he gonna lead by example with his play. And he gonna be himself. Now you know the the beauty of our team. You know you have a Drek, you have a Romel, you have those guys always talking. Like both of those guys, Drek and, and Romel, just come to practice. They are gonna be the only one talking the whole time. I gotta tell them to shut up. <laughs> you know, I you know like I gotta get into it with them because they talking. They want every call. Like Sean's just gonna play. He gonna play. He gonna play basketball. When you come watch me, he's just gonna hoop. Mm -hmm. Like he's a hooper, you know what I mean? Like he just, he just out there hooping. He just want to win. He just want to go out there and, and kill somebody and play basketball. He got a good feel for the game. You know, he got a feel for the game. And, um, man, he, he just does things that, that a, you can't teach. Um, he's just special with some of the things that he can do. You know, it's just, it, it's funny because even, the sun, you know, last summer when we, you know they had moments, they had times where they was playing. You know, he got hurt, but they had times where they was playing as a team. Mm -hmm. So you know, you know, we all been in gyms, and you had that one guy in the gym, and it's that ooh, you know, the whole gym, ooh, like he's getting that response from his teammates in the summertime. Um, you know, so it was unfortunate, but at the same time, everything happens for a reason. I'm a firm believer in that, so I'm excited about. Um, I'm excited about him this year because you got to understand his mentality, being a McDonald's All-American, going to Ole Miss, playing the SEC, starting as a freshman, um, obviously coming back from injury and coming back and starting again uh, as a sophomore. And obviously, so he had the chance, instead of just going right into playing here, he had the chance to sit back and just kind of respect our league. You know, because you get those guys. I, I had a guy, a kid that transferred for me when I was at Alabama State from a power five. And it took him a minute to adjust uh, to our league because, like we say, he thought it was sweet. Mm -hmm. You know, he thought, like, he going to come down here and I'm going to average 20. He don't know. He looking up. He got five, six points. And they, it, just, it ain't what you thought. You right. know, and then all of a sudden toward the end, he kind of, you know, last second half, he started to get it together. Then the, the senior year, he was really good. Um, so I thought, and this is without me saying it, and I'm, and I'm speaking for him. I'm like, I, like I know what he, he never told me this, but I'm just assuming he had the opportunity to just watch for a year mm -hmm. and just respect our league and realize like, like, if I ain't ready, like, I just can't just roll the ball out. Like, I got to be ready, you know. So now when we in the gym, we already in the gym, by the way, you know. So, okay. and it and it, it's not practice or nothing. It's just I'm in the gym. They know I'm in the gym from 11 to 1. Whoever want to come, y'all come get some work in. And everybody show up, you know. So um, he's in the gym, you know, he's in the gym. He can't, he, he ain't really hundred percent far moving yet. Cause he ain't clear yet, but he in the gym getting a thousand shots up, thousand shots up. So for a guy that, um, used to get it out the bouncing out the move, but now you forced to be stationary learning just that, 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 that just adds another layer, um, of, of, of confidence to his game too. So I think he'll be a, a lot better, um, catch and shoot three-point shooter as he's done in the past, been in the past because, you know, the ball has always been in his hand. So now he's able to 
just all he can, that's all he can do. He can't really just move and, and work out. So everything he's doing is just boom, catch and shoot, stepping into it, rhythm, stepping into it, rhythm. And he's shooting a bunch of them every single day. So um, I'm excited about him. I mean, Romel, I was excited about him this year. Obviously, um, um, all preseason guy um, coming back and missed the whole year. We missed him, but him coming back, it was a, it was great for him this year because he he was good to go uh, since January, like the middle of January. But we didn't want to waste the whole year with him. Um, so we decided to redshirt him, you know, to bring him back this year. So he was he's been training, he's been working out, he's been sharpening his his tools. So um been getting better, you know, changing his game. He's gonna be more off the bounce a little bit this year, um, shooting the ball a lot better, you know. So he's able to work on some things. So he'll be he'll be good for us. Um so I expect those two guys to be really good for us. Um and we got and we got to put some pieces around them. You know, obviously I, I'm talking to six tens, I'm talking to six left. So we need a big um, that can that can play. You know, I, I ain't talking about no damn body. Uh, I'm talking about somebody that can that can play. Um, so we we recruit guys that can come in right away and play. Um, then then we got the young boys that we talked about earlier. So uh, we, we we so we excited about the group. And then y'all know me. Y'all done watch me coach. I don't play 10, 11 guys. There's going to be eight guys that I'm rocking with and we rolling. So um, hey, hey, I'm coach, excited coach, about the group. Coach, you, you're talking about uh, having those shooters. Look here, man. Um, I went to both Valley games. <laughs> <laughs> big on this, man. Hey, they had about three players on them, man. They caught my eye, but I'll leave it at that. Hey, Cole, you want uh th this? Hey, man, the man said that, but no, nah, no, nah, we was. <laughs> hey, man, we tried hey, to get somebody hey, from Valley last year. I don't know if they're interested in the port or not, but uh, they're no white. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Roquan gone, though. He gone. He gone. Yeah, that, that's the one I wanted, but he gone. gone. But uh, Roquan gone. Roquan gone. Oh, Roquan. Oh, Washington. Yeah. Hey, Coach, <laughs> you want to explain this uh, one, uh, two dog, one bone? Without a doubt. I mean, it's two dogs, man, it, it's self-explanatory, it's man. You took the words out of my mouth. So you put two dogs in a kennel, man. Close it up. Just put a bone in there. And you 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 ask me if they're going to share that bone. They're going to – you know, you get it for five minutes, dog, then I'll get it after you five minutes. They ain't doing that. <laughs> so it's self-explanatory. Two dogs, one bone. We live by that. Well, look, I want to, to ask you, Coach. Being that you had the career that you had, man, I mean, from – from your high school career, being McDonald's All American, going to Alabama, being a freshman All American, having the uh, going to the NBA, being NBA champion. Just curious to know, like even now, when you actually recruit, and I'm speaking on point guard specifically, do you actually try to find trace of yourself into the player you're recruiting, or do you look for things in players like that you that you saw in yourself and your game translate to them? Is that like, are you looking for certain things within you in them? No, I don't look for certain things that's in me in them. Um, I look for the player for what it is. I, I I've been around the game so long, played around, played with and against so many different players. That's not myself, so I know what a good player looks like, you know, and I know how to put good players in position from what I've seen, what I've been around, uh, or what I play with, you know. So, but at the same time, to answer your question, when I see a kid and it's like, man, that mother, like he kind of you know, reminiscent of how I play, you know, he may be a scoring guard that can get it going he quick. He fast. I'm like, okay. Like, they he kind of similar to you. And I, I get calls all the time, you know, from people that's, that's sending me kids, you know, man, Hey, this the first day they say, Oh, Hey man, I'm telling you, man, man, young Mo Williams, man, young Mo Williams. Oh, so I get that often. And that's, and that's typically a scoring point guard. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody that can, you know, score the ball quick, you know, coming out, pick and roll, shoot the three, kind of score at all three levels. That's kind of my game, you know. So, but at the same time, when you're building the team, you don't sometimes you don't need a more Williams at the point. So um it just depends on the team, you know. Like if if I if I don't if I'm not playing, if I'm if I just got big that's rebounding and blocking shots, then I might need a I need a point guard, I need a more Williams at the point, you know, so because I need him to have some dominant game. Cause I don't play out the post it that often, but if I got two fours, they can go get it. I got a shooter, 
I got somebody on the wing that can go get it. I need a really a point guard that can run my team, but that can make plays, that can make shots, can get in the paint, strong, can guard, can do multiple things, um, and quick, and can get the ball up and push. Um, you know, and then you you figure out what you need. You know, coming off the bench, you know, you need athleticism, you need shooting, and obviously you need a back a backup point guard. That's a different dynamic than your starting point guard. So. You know, it's about building a team and just kind of starting on, on your main guys and kind of building around them. Um, that's the beauty of it. We already had the main guys. Even though we had a lot of guys in the transfer portal, the main guys are still the main guys that are still here. So that made my job a lot easier, just putting guys around them. I ain't, I ain't really had to go get the big fishes. So um, so I'm, I, I was excited about, you know, just what I had to build around, even though I lost a lot of guys. Hey, Coach, I, I want to know um... – this, this near and dear to my heart, but have you taken a visit to Exit 119 to see what they got up there for you? Absolutely. We got an offer. Out there. We had two offer. Um, Tay Tay, we offered him. Um, I think he's going to Juco. I'm not sure. And then um, Big Big Fellow. She, we offered him last year. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> I don't care where you go. Hey, the hey, transfer hey, portal real. Back. Like, we might not get him right away. <laughs> hey, the transfer portal real now. <laughs> oh, 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 yes, indeed, man. I tell oh, my coaches all the time, they, they say, ah, oh, man, he trying to go to Mississippi State. I said, let me explain something to you, man. Recruit him anyway. The transfer portal is real. Yeah. Right. Man, we done recruited so many guys that, that went somewhere, and all of a sudden we look in the portal, and there their name gone. And you know what? I guess you want the prime example. You take our uh, – as for now, we we, we thinking QB one fifteen Jacoby Morgan. He's from Kansas. In the portal? Had, no, no, no. He initially started. Oh, out man, I was about to say. No, no, no. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. Yep. In yep. Syracuse, and now he's back home. So yeah, you got to stay on him. Got to keep throwing yep. that bone out there, co uh, coach. So that that's exactly my point. So it ain't even about the throwing the bone. Like you really recruiting him. Like right. Like Jamario is it? It, it can like I. It'll be best for him to come play for me as a freshman because he's going to play for me as a freshman. He's going to play a lot as a freshman. He's going to get better as a freshman. You can hit the portal after your freshman year if you want to. I don't Flip give a damn. Down. You Flip know, down. so <clears throat> so at the end of the day, uh, getting these kids to understand what a leverage is today. They don't understand what a leverage is, especially high school kids. They want to get the biggest offer so they can post it on social media, but not realizing as a freshman, you need to go somewhere and play right away. You know, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't the JUCOs no more. Like, freshmen got to understand if you're really good and you can go to uh, Mississippi State and you can go to Alabama and you can go to Kentucky or you can go to all these schools as a, a freshman and Damn. play 10 minutes a game or maybe red shirt and be – if you're good enough to do that, you good enough to go to Jackson State and play as a freshman. And have an impact. You good enough? If you good enough to play there, you good enough to come to Jack State and have an impact as a freshman. Will you win Swag Player of the Year? Hell no, because we ain't that sweet. But you're good enough to have an impact, an impact where you're helping a team win basketball games, and that's the most important thing. Now that helps you get to Kentucky quicker than the junior college. So yeah. what I explain to kids that's on that caliber because I'm recruiting those kids too. I tell them, I'm your JUCO. Me, Jackson State, we're your JUCO. So keep that in mind. So understand, we're not just recruiting guys that's supposed to go to Southern, that's supposed to go to Valley, that's supposed to go to Alcorn because they didn't, they not getting no more calls. Like the guys that we're talking to, the guys that I'm talking to, they have other options. You know, they have NIL space that they're sitting in. But I'm offering something else. I'm offering an opportunity. I'm offer, offering an opportunity to play. So, therefore, we're going to have some freshmen on the floor. But I guarantee you, I ain't recruiting no freshmen that can't play and, ain't go, I mean, and don't but, have the right but, mindset. But so, with that being said, Coach, I mean, if those players understand, if they were to come into your fold and get under your tutelage and the coaching that you would give, seeing, the, seeing what you are building, I see the vision. I see the vision. And we saw a glimpse of it, but – Unfortunately, you had anywhere from three to five players that couldn't play. So I see your vision and what you're trying to build, especially with the game that you're talking. So if you get those players in, we have to understand this is a little, it's a lot different from football because now everybody is playing everybody. I mean, you guys started out with a whole um, 
tournament, you know, through California. So yep. your name and your rep is getting out there, and then you got the tournament, and then you win your division. Now you're playing, you know, in, in the top 64 team, it may lead to the Sweet 16. So your name and your recognition get out there just as well. So this is a different avenue. So what you're seeing is exactly right, you know, for them to understand. Not only that, especially if they locally, they can get their parents to come and their friends to come down, you know, and watch them play and have that support as well. And a lot of them don't realize how important that is. Let me let me let me add, let me add something to that, Coach. Um, because I asked Coach Tyler today. I was talking to him about, and I see my brother first on here. Shout out to first, um, uh, Miss Put It On Some. Uh, we was talking about what's his name, uh, Amir Abdul Rahim, mm -hmm. Rauf Abdul Rauf. He actually committed to Holmes. I, I wanted to get your thoughts on because one one of the things you're seeing a lot of, and you have sons as well, like the up and coming rise of this NBA pedigree, uh, 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 like the next generation of NBA sons that's that that that's out there. Uh, do you have um like a mind? Do, do, What's your thoughts on recruiting those types of kids that 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 come from uh, that that have parents that played in the NBA like yourself? Um, you got Gilbert Arena's son out there. You got the Boozer twins. Mm -hmm. You got, I mean, let's go Jamal Crawford. You got Chris Paul's son, Bronny James. I mean, you got all these big time players that you played with. Um, my thoughts on your uh, approach to recruiting uh, those types of uh, uh, players or whatnot. Well, for one, you know they have a basketball pedigree. Um, it, I mean, I, I want to use this analogy, but I don't. But but you'll get what I'm saying. It's almost like when you when you're buying a, a good dog. You know, if you're in a dog, but like you're buying a good dog, you, you always uh, want to know their bloodline. You want to know you know their pedigree, just where they come from. So when you have kids like my sons or. Um, um, uh, Mark Mood or uh, Monte or uh, Big Al got a son that's gonna be crazy. He in Atlanta, um, eighth grade right. in in Atlanta. You know, so it, it, it's like I go. It, it's it's crazy because it's just the pedigree. Those guys just kind of been around the game, kind of soaking it in, and if they just love it and they have a mindset that they love it, they can just kind of touch certain things. So. It's always uh, interesting, even recruiting or even why, even if I'm not recruiting, just watching. Just like Bronny, I was able to kind of watch Bronny come up, you know, just being in Cleveland, just kind of just seeing just how he became who he became. And he never, he never, he just kept being right. a better basketball player. I'm just mm. trying to find the right analogy. He just kept getting better at basketball. Working. He never really got caught up in trying to prove to us that he can be the best player in the world. Okay. You know, he just, he just, Working. so, so I think, you know, for me, uh, my kids, for example, I think we give, I give them a, I give them some, I give them a, I give them something to look for, look, look up to meaning I, I want to get to where he got. Um, but it's also is humbling to them too at the same time because they can feel like they the best player, you know, in at their level, their age, but they know they're not better than me. You know what I mean? So it's still a little humbleness to them where they still feel like they ain't there yet. You know, they still got to get better. Being if you take kids that don't have um, – you know, uh, uh, because uh, I'm I'm just using this example because you just talk about NBA kids. They yeah, don't yeah. have an NBA dad or some a dad that played it. Yeah. They don't have that. They don't have nothing to look to gauge their self to. So they they can gauge themselves to their peers, and then when they become better than their peers, then all of a sudden they felt they feel like they they're good enough. Mm -hmm. You know, and they don't. I can go out here and have 40 and I can, I don't have to work out three days. You know what I mean? And I'm still going to go have 40 and they don't realize those are guys that we still talk about that we used to be cold. Like, man, that my boy, if he just, Ooh, that boy was cold, boy. If he just did this and did, man, you know, so they, I think that's the difference. And if you, and it don't have to be NBA day, it can just be a mentor. It could be someone that they just see 
that they want to be like. I remember when I came up, it was Lindsey Hunter. Um, me and Tommy Hunter, his brother, rest in peace, we right, was in the right. same class. We was at Merrill together um, as freshmen. We was on the same team, and it was an NBA lockout, so Lindsey was at home the whole time, and we used to train with him. So I'm 14 Ooh. years old training with Lindsay. We out there pushing sleds and pulling tires and you know all kind of stuff. When I was in the when I was 14 years old, he was in the NBA. So I had someone to actually Vision. see and mm -hmm. be around. Like I know what it takes. Like if I ain't doing this, I ain't gonna make it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I was getting up at five in the morning. And that's why I was doing something. Everybody else was what, um, it, what everybody else wasn't doing. They weren't working like I was working. And when I heard somebody was doing something, I made sure that I was doing more than what they was doing, you wow. know? So I've always kept that mentality and that mindset. Um, and that started at 14 years old. Uh, when Lindsay came home, when we was a freshman in high school and that changed my life uh, because that summer after that after my freshman year in the summer my uh that summer AAU basketball I went on the circuit I came back to Jackson as number three player in my class and never looked back from there you know so would that yeah. happen if I didn't be with Lindsay that my freshman year maybe but maybe not you know right. he just gave me a different mindset of what it's gonna take for me to be great and once so I took that approach give you a template yeah, yeah. Right. so like I didn't know that before I met him. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that, you know. So um, so I to answer your question, I know it's a long answer, but I think it's just if you have something, that's what NBA kids have. They just been around NBA players, NBA basketball, Brown what Brandon. it takes, you know, because because <clears throat> I don't care. I know as fans, we can sit and watch a game and see somebody and be like, man, he trash, man. How the hell he in the NBA? I could be in the NBA, he in the NBA. Right. I'm telling you guys, everybody that wear NBA jersey, I promise you, can play some basketball. Yep. Contrary yep. to whatever you think or whatever you see, they can play some basketball. I promise you. Um, so whatever that case may be, but um, I think that's the answer to your question, man. I just think they have just that that humbleness to them because they know, man, I, they got to work as a kid because they'll never be as good as they father. So, you know, kids always had that fear. Hey, Coach, I, I noticed, speaking on what you're saying, I noticed a lot of time uh, you you will post something, you know, with your kids being in the gym with you at, you know, what, four or five, you know, in the morning shooting around, stuff like that. So I see you passing it on down to them, you know, which is great. So let me ask you, this, do you shy or – do you do, do you find yourself shying away or, or from uh I, I think um I think Eric Dampier has a son out playing. You know, mm -hmm. do you offer those players or do you uh shy away from them? I've I've, I've I haven't offered uh Damp yeah, he's just too young. Uh but Sam Funches been offered, <laughs> you know. Um so I'm offering these kids like the, I, and it's just <laughs> not just like I want to I want to coach them. Uh and like I said like Five years ago, that was far fetched. Like we we talking right. like this is not a real thing. This is a real thing. Like, yes, those guys, these these schools, these blue bloods are under fire every single year. Yep. They ain't got time to be taking chances on no unproven players. And that's gonna be typically freshmen, right? Like if you're not a McDonald's All American. They ain't really gonna give you a shot like that. They're gonna bring somebody in. Maybe if you're good enough, they may bring you off the bench for some minutes, but they ain't gonna put too much pressure on you where they're gonna get fired. So understanding that, you gotta recruit these high school kids that can play. Mm -hmm. Like you recruit them, recruit them, sell them on the fact that they're gonna play, they're gonna be in the they're gonna be in the moment, they're gonna help us win. You're gonna develop. And when you do get that chance to transfer to go play where you want to play, you will be ready to play and you'll have footage against division one opponents and not just high school opponents. So understanding the game and recruiting today is half the battle. You know, you can't get in your feelings about kids hitting the portal. Like that, that ain't something you should be in your feelings about. 
that's gonna happen. That's part of the game. Mm-hmm. Like they got a rule now where kids can I can go to school. If I got four years to play, yep. I can go to four different schools and play every single year yep. with no, and I can go to four different schools and get if I if all four schools want to pay me to come, I can get paid by four different schools every year, no matter if I played uh if no matter what happened the year before. Yep. No matter if I'm in a great situation, I love the coaching staff, I love this, I love that. But you know what? I you know what? I, I never played in a cold cold city. Let's see, let's see what's out there. I think I want to go. Well, I want to go play in, on the West Coast. So let's see what's up. Uh, they can do that. They have all the right in the world to do it. So I think the the nature of recruiting today is really not getting in your feelings about it. Just understanding on Business. you're building a team. You understand what you're building. And if you lose a guy, you just got to recruit and fill some spots up. You got to fill some spots up. And typically, if you're in a, you're in a situation, you got guys that's in, in, in good situations and, and you're taking care of them um, in that NIL space, which goes back to when we got on the phone at first, just understanding you do have um, something to take care of for you guys. You can retain you know, some key pieces so you're not building every year. Um, because the good teams, you look at you look at Connecticut and you look at uh, Purdue. They had some transfers on their team, but they also had a couple of freshmen, and they also had a few guys that had been there over three years, three years or more, that played significant minutes. Right. So it was a mixture of all the on the on the two team that played in the national championship. You know, uh, mm. Castle for 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 Connecticut freshman. Yeah. You know, um, two transfers on the wing. The two other uh, big fella, they been there three years. Yep, they got a program. You know, so, yep. so they understand the the recruiting aspect of it. And obviously, we talking about from a power C, uh, five standpoint, but it don't change no matter what level you on. Mm-hmm. Like the process don't change. You understand what you need to be successful, and you got to have the right mixture you got to have the right nucleus you got to have you because you're going to keep them boys going they're going to have energy every day they're going to have hunger and then you got to have a mixture of guys that have been around that actually love the program you know they actually bleed the program then you got to have them guys that can come in and transfer that has the right hunger you know that been in high places and just want a better opportunity might have got a little money. They ain't studying that no more. I want an opportunity to play and win. So they're out there. Those guys are out there. You know, so it ain't all about the NIL space. It ain't like, man, we need to get some money or we ain't going to win. That ain't the case. Mm-hmm. NIL space just make my job easier. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But we're going to get it done regardless. We're going to get the players here regardless. You know, so at the end, and we're going to get the right player. You just got to get the right mindset and understand to get the same outcome. It may be a guy that may have numbers already that look good. That's why he ain't your, on your phone asking you for money. So you got to vet, your, you got to do a job of vetting kids and understand I can get the same talent from a kid that ain't got the opportunity yet. That don't cost me nothing yep. but time. That's it. Time put into this kid, building them back up, giving them confidence, understanding that he is good and pulling it out of them rather hey, than doing them the same thing to, for another guy. Hey, Coach, I look at the, um, you know, seeing your vision and, and hearing the passion in your voice or, you know, what you're trying to take the program to. I look at the success, you know, that Coach Reed has been having with the lady uh with the lady tigers and the recognition that they be getting you know with your vision and and, and the players that you got coming in and and, and both both of the teams are are gelling and, and being successful on that level these players need to understand how much light that that could bring to their careers as well because it's not like you're not going to get seen or recognized for the things that's going on because the Tigers are playing some good basketball. And, and, and like you said, with, you know, with the uh, misstep mishaps that you had with the injury last year, 
it kind of slowed you up. But I, I, I got a feeling you're gonna be the coach next year. So, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, you know, obviously, uh, you know, with us, it, it's it's about making sure we understand uh, from from a from a coach's standpoint, from a university standpoint, just. First of all, let, let me rewind and, and and get you to understand just from what Coach Reed has done, uh, just from what six years being here, how she's won and dominated. I mean, obviously, that's that's the story. I mean, obviously, she's gonna go down. Like we're gonna we we just living in it now. You know, we, we're gonna look at it down the road. This this that's legendary. That's that's my classmate. Went to high school together, so ain't number love for her, but. Uh, right. Like the stuff she she's doing is uh remarkable. So, you know, I hope the best uh for her. Obviously she's um working through some things now. So we'll see what happens. And um I wish the best for her. So she's done a tremendous job. Uh, but but that's 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 the mindset uh, that we have. You know, that's the mindset that we have. It's it's no different. Um, we want to dominate and we understand what it's gonna take to dominate. Um the men's game is different. Um it's it's you do you do the swag men's history. It just one one school just ain't dominating like that. So that that lets you know uh just how big what she's done. Um so for us, we want we want to start this thing off right. We want you guys to understand uh, what we're building and we're not ha- we're not satisfied with winning 12 games and 11 games. Um, you know, maybe some schools okay with that. You know, but that's not a standard, you know, for myself, you know, for um, for our program. So winning 11 games, winning 12 games, you know, it, it, it keeps your job, but it don't it don't it don't makes me happy. Make me happy at all. Man, you said a lot tonight, coach. I, I, I appreciate it, man. I, I know we, we we've had you for quite some time, uh, almost an hour and a half, man. And it feels like 43 it's- minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all love though man it's all love hey, i've been told you man it, that i was gonna come on the show it's been a long time coming so i'm glad i'm glad you guys had me on uh um, hey i need you to do something though coach i need you to reiterate that? to the family we still got over 600 people watching i know appreciate everybody that's donated uh we're a little we we, we almost to halfway to our goal so I need some folks out there that's watching man to go ahead and throw a little something in the pot y'all see the ticket at the bottom we gonna clip. We, we trying to. We trying to. I, I want. I like to get this stuff over with, man. I don't like lingering. I don't want to come back. For on sure. Friday and be well, like, hey, y'all. Well, listen. Well, listen. We. You know. I'm. Um. First of all, be honest with you, dog. Uh, I'm gonna say this. It's hard. It. I'm not comfortable asking for money. Not hey, you. Not you. I, I know, but what I'm saying. I'm not. I'm just. I'm just saying. I'm not. But I am asking. But I'm not comfortable <laughs> doing it because it, I'm just a. I'm a person that just go get shit done. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I don't, Me too, I don't bro. really, you know. But at the same time, this is a collective. This is our university. You know what I mean? This is our team. Uh, you know, I just happen to be the one in charge of building this thing. So if you guys trust me and understand my vision, and my vision is to be great um, as fans, that's what we want. And all I'm saying is this helps. This helps us create a culture that enhances everything and the experience that we're talking about, the entertainment things that we're talking about that we want to change at the game. Winning helps that, you know, um, the women are already doing it. Obviously we're trying to build a men's program unto, up to that level and we won't stop till we do. But the first goal we got to do is get in this NIL space. You know, that's one thing. This is my uh, going into my third year here. We haven't had it the first two years. Um, we was blessed. And, and I don't think people know this stat. And I don't think this stat gets uh, talked about enough before before I go. Not mm-hmm. this past summer, not this summer, but not not going into last year, last summer. We was one of five teams in the country. One of five teams in the country did not have one player hit the transfer portal. And we didn't have no NIL. You know, so this year, obviously, we had some guys have some success. 
and the transfer portal is real and the NIL is real. And we had some guys that played some minutes significantly and for a couple of years and they feel like they're in a position where they can go get some money. Um, so, you know, like I said, you can't, can't, can't take it personal. Um, you just got to move forward, you know, recruit other guys and understand that you got to build that side up. And that's why we're here uh, today asking, you know, for you guys support. So we can be able to retain those guys, not more so than go get guys, just the guys that we recruit. We want to take care of them. And when we build them up and we develop them, we want to have a seat at the table too, along with other schools. Um, we don't want to just take ourselves off the uh, out the seat, you know. So we want to have something to play. So if we want to do retain guys, we want to be able to present them with something. Now, if they choose to go uh, somewhere else, when we present it, at least we have that same thing to go present someone else with equal talent. So um, that's that's all the the collective is about. Hey, Kenny, you muted. Yeah, that's great to know. Uh, we uh, we were encouraged to hear that there was one, you know, that there is something out there. We talk about getting that information and, uh, man, we what, we what we're doing. And this is not you asking. This is just how we do. This is how we get down. We and I, I don't like to, as I said, not to really uh, uh, toot your own horn. But hell, if we don't do it, who will do it? Right. Uh, we've done we've done a little bit. We've done a little bit over the past year and a half. And we've done it as a collective unit. Um, and we got a lot of supporters that support the channel, uh, uh, coach that, um, may not have a thousand dollars to give. They may not have, they may not be in that, but that $5, $10, $15, $20, they can be a part of, that's why I say we're going to come as a unit. When we say KC 1400, it's not Ken Clark. It's, it's, it's Ken, it's the panel, it's the family. We had, we got 675 people looking at us right now. You know, the point is, is that, you know, with that contribution, you know, like I said, NIL is not something that the school does. It's, exactly. it's separate from the school. This ain't got nothing to do with Coach Mo. This ain't got nothing to do with that. We we are already in that space. You know, we we have our brand ambassador athletes that rock the brand, that promote the brand, promote the channel, and we uh we well, well versed in the NIL space. But okay, uh, what we wanted to do is just be a just be an example of watching something exist, Coach and supporting it through action. And we may not be able to, like I said, if you get a bunch of people walking in the door with $25, that's gonna kind of get a little jumbled up. But what you can do is if all them 25, if all the people that got that, that 25, 15, $50 come together and we put it all together, we could present one check to uh, the entity that is in place, that is supporting the, the men's basketball program. And like I said, we pledge in 10,000. So we gonna raise it, we gonna get there. You know, and, and any time we fall short, we always make up the difference. So the number is is already committed, and all I do is put it out in the atmosphere and and and, and hope hopes that the uh, the family get active, and they have, man. So I haven't looked back at it, but I would like to I would like to believe that we've hit the the mid the midway mark of five k uh, in 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 collections right now. So we'll uh, we'll keep pushing, and we'll get that. No, I appreciate and, uh, it. I'll get with you offline and, and get in contact with. Uh, the, uh, the the you know person uh, 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 Tandy that's uh, that's that's ahead of of, of of this collective that you speak of, and uh, we definitely look forward to partnering and and, and in this particular aspect, and and hopefully and even in the future, man, away. man. You get them dogs, everybody gonna be happy now. Everybody gonna <laughs> yeah. be talking about how happy they are, man. I mean, see, they love we love going in them Facebook group, coach. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we love going in them on social media talking smack. But you can yeah. always talk smack when you're winning. That's right. <laughs> when you That's ain't right. winning, you can't talk no whole lot of smack. That's so right. A part of Trust winning me. is a part I of love uh, winning. I yeah, love man. winning, man. Absolutely. So that's pretty much what I had. You got anything, TD, before we get ready to let yeah, Coach? Yeah, yeah I want to say two things, kind of uh, riding on what you said, Ken. You know, yeah. a lot of time in football, Coach Mo, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, the coaches would announce or whatever who they, you know, the recruiting, man, Tiger Nation go out there and, you know, help, you know, help reel them in, man. And we found out that the player, that that has been a strong point and a lot of players being interested in Jackson State from the fan base reaching out to the reaching out to the recruits, let them know, hey, this is a place you need to be. And, and they come in, they said, man, we felt the love. So is there anything like that that you have that you 
presented, they put out there for your recruit that you will have Tiger Nation um, to reach out. Maybe, you know, if, if you care for the aspect, I mean, there's something, you know, that you probably could think about it, you know, and do. And also, um, you know, we just partnered, you know, in football with uh, the Jersey Wave, you know, okay. doing some uh, uh, got some NIL things going on with, you know, the football team. And I spoke with him a time or two, and he's looking to come your way as well. I, I think he presented you in the jersey last year. So, okay. so it, it, it's some things going on. Um, you know, and, and Ken and I work with them on Friday. You know, with uh, with the um, with the players, and as a matter of fact, we got a video out. So just look for Jersey Way to be coming to a gym new, near you. To get some of your uh some of your, <laughs> rules, your players <laughs> that you want and, and 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 all these local players, you know, Mr. Hoover, you know, Mr. Wilson, you know, mm -hmm. uh McMillan, they 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 parents can go to the website and purchase their jersey and they'll receive, you know, they, they'll receive portion of that, you know, uh, of the of that portion. Okay. So yes, sir. So we we working on some things. I love it, man. I love so it. We'll I love this, man. Come up with you on that. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll, we'll definitely uh, whatever we can do, man. I, my, you know, it's di love all the way through, you know, to the gristle, man. So we just trying to do what we can do. This channel was created out of a need. I mean, we just kind of came here. And it really the event when Prime left. We being honest, and it just kind of morphed into this conglomerate of you know activity. And we've done so much, man. So. Uh, it just it, it feels good to be a blessing. I mean, we're excited about the program that you you started to build, coach, and, and having you on and really speaking your vision. I knew that I knew that the fans and those that are watching would, would love to hear what you had to say and really kind of get a perspective of that. So uh, you you giving us a, a really really wide lens uh, to inside to getting that hockey jersey. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I, I appreciate it, man. Listen, this is this is what I do. I mean. I know everybody on this call uh, that gave money. Obviously, you have a job because you ain't giving no money if you ain't had no job. Facts. So, but this is my job, you know. So this is what I do all day, every day. This is what I breathe, you know. So you got you guys watch us and support us for entertainment, you know. When you have time, right? Um, this is what we wake up and do every day. So um, we just as much as you want this thing to be successful, we want this thing to be successful times ten. So. Because um, we putting everything we got into it, so that, that, and we that will get there. One bone hoodie on sale. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Need that. <laughs> we work. We working on it right now. All right. I'm loving it, man. I'm loving it. Y'all keep them donations coming because we gonna keep. We gonna stay on probably another hour or at least probably 35, 40 minutes. Got a few preliminaries to get into. Uh, but uh, man, anytime you want to come up, if you got some news, if you got some information you want to share, uh, you if, 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 whether you can or can't, we're gonna touch the assistant coaches to get them on, let them get a little air time too. And then, um, if not, you can just pass a message to it, we'll be more than happy to put it out there. I mean, the more the merrier. Um, and like I said, man, keep up the great work, let's keep this thing rolling, man. I appreciate you. I appreciate it. All right, boy, I'll see y'all. All right, peace appreciate out. Appreciate you, coach. There it is, man. Appreciate y'all, man. Great, uh, great, great, great interview, man. Great time with Coach uh, Mo Williams. We appreciate him for coming on the platform. If you're just now tuning in, before you run off, if you haven't donated, we are doing. We, we, we y'all know how we get down, man. Uh, we, um, we have a KC 1400 men's basketball donation. We, we collect it. We, our goal is ten thousand. Uh, we going If you're watching this, uh, video and it's not live, just know that the goal is ten thousand. You can donate. Uh, 25, 5, 10, 15, 20, 100, 500, 1,000, whatever you want to get active with. Uh, we would greatly appreciate that, and we'll get it over there to, um, um, to Coach Mo. Uh, we hit 11,000 for the women's uh, donation and had a conversation with Coach Samiga Reed about that today. And um, uh, she was very well pleased and uh, excited about that. And um, it, it, it just goes to show. Uh, people put their money where their passion is at, and you guys are passionate about what we do. You support what we do, and we're going to keep it rolling, man. We thank you, and we thank you for the support. Uh, like I said, it's not about us, but uh, we, we, we're we going to continue to do what we do, man. Um, Yo, Ephraim, we're going to offer out, we're going to auction off your trombone, man. <laughs>
Hey, hey, trombone shorty. And for those that don't know, man, I'm gonna drop this uh this uh banner real quick and uh, I'll come back to it. For those that don't know, uh we do have a, a foundation, friends with KC 1400 in, on Giblify. Uh great way to donate. Uh you get a tax deductible. Uh um if you donate to our 501 C3. Uh you can make all your donations uh payable to that, or you can use Zale, you can use Cash App, you can use PayPal, whatever, or you can uh go by mail if you need to mail a check, uh shoot me an email. KC fourteen hundred media group at gmail.com. I'll send you the email, uh, send you the address. You can send it to the PO box. And uh, like I said, for those who don't want to donate via electronically, uh, feel free to send it via KC fourteen hundred media group at gmail.com. Man, uh, one of the things, uh, like I said, I just wanted to put that out there so to folks that did know. I want to shout out our channel, our sponsors, uh, the Hattiesburg Management Group. Uh, Canon Toyota Vicksburg. Shout out to Canon Toyota, man. It's just been just a great resource, man. And kept keep keep your brother rolling, man. Uh, while I'm here, you know what I'm saying. And and transportation for the season. Um, got a a, a schedule signing scheduled uh, coming up, uh, possibly next month. Uh, we'll, we'll get a couple of our branded uh, brand ambassadors out there to sign some football schedules and have a, a big event over at the dealership. Uh, shout out to uh, Terrence and brother Timothy Poe. At uh, Auto Masters, uh, go to www.automasters06.com. Let them know what you're looking for. Check out the inventory. Uh, they got some dope vehicles over there, man, for you uh, with, with great value. So, you know, anytime, everything is so high right now. You need to find a good deal. Uh, but, uh, again, we want to welcome, uh, shout our ex to the family. Um, got the communication back from Dr. Ted. And while we're here, man, uh, we might as well, TD. Uh, we'll put it up there for those that don't understand. Shout our ex, national brand. National brand, man. Congratulations. Shout out to uh to 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 uh big brother KT Dub for helping us foster this deal and so much more to come to that. And and I I just I'm super excited about it. Here's a 15 minute second, a 15 second video to let you know a little bit about Shot RX. But we'll be right back. Shot RX is bringing healthcare to you. With our mobile health team, we can come to your school, church, or business to take care of you. We offer childhood immunizations, COVID and flu vaccinations, physicals, and much more. Don't put your health off. Welcome to Care and Compassion. Welcome to Shot RX. There it is, our new partner. Uh, uh, shout out to Dr. Ted, man. Appreciate the clip um if you're in the memphis area yeah if you shout out to memphis 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 shout out to m town man and uh we appreciate him for partnering with the platform and uh looking to do some big big things looking to bless three students and we're gonna put that information out there because somebody watching this may have a niece or, ne or nephew or a son or a daughter you know and uh you know that may be at the university maybe from the memphis area maybe looking for an internship uh in what capacity but we will find those students and we will be a blessing to them man and offer those uh ten thousand dollar um uh internships for this summer and we're gonna announce them at three football games this year first game we're gonna announce today is gonna be at the southern game that's gonna be september the 14th southern our second mm -hmm. home game that's after the lane college game we will announce our first uh uh intern the second game will be homecoming and the third game will be Texas Southern on the road. I don't know which one came before which one. Uh, they're looking at, and also they are. That's right. Uh, big news coming down the pipe. Shot RX is moving. They are opening a location right here at the Medical Mall, TD in Jackson, Mississippi. And this is a JSU alum. We are talking about another JSU alum that's doing big time things. That's really, really, really. <laughs> Really, really, really it's looking to make a great impact, man. Okay. So, are, 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 are the students that they're looking for, do they have to be in, like, the, the health, health science field? department? Health science, okay. Yeah, they want, you want them to be in the health science department. He, he, he uh, it's, it's, I mean, this is a, this is a doctor's office. So, you know, we, we want to make sure that they, that they're moving in that direction. And they have, he have, he has a, uh, a system in place, TD, to pick these students, particular students. But what we're going to do is we're going to talk to them. We're going to talk to them, find out how they feel about it. Y'all know it's Casey 1400 Media. We're going to bring it to you, put it right in front of your front door. And we're going to give a visual to um, to some stuff that's going on that's not sports related. You know what I'm saying? Because guess what? Non-athletes got more, got just as much money as athletes do, Titty. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but we can also be a blessing to those students. So uh, that's pretty awesome, man. Pretty awesome stuff. And I'm excited about it. Um, looking forward to it. 
Uh, we still got some Irv Mulligan t-shirts on the website. Um, go ahead over to kc1400media.com and shop. We got kid sizes. Now, we'll keep those up until we know when the season starts. Folks will be looking for some small shirts, man, for their sons and daughters uh, when their time come up. But uh, uh, we want to go ahead and sell those out. And like I said, Irv gets uh, – 50% of the profit goes to Irv on these shirts, man. So um, direct payment into his pocket. And we appreciate those who have supported it thus far. Again, we appreciate Coach Mo Williams for coming on the platform. Hell of an interview. Congratulations to our very own A.D. Robinson again uh, for being the 2024 Young and Gifted Empowered Award Leader of the Year recipient. A.D. Robinson is doing a stellar job, always keeping the coaches and student athletes uh, on the up and up at Jackson State. Uh, shout out to the uh, the women's tennis team. You know they won the regular season. They were they were part of the three. As y'all can see, there were some other schools behind that, but we don't focus on the mother school. We want to say shout out to our tight Lady Tigers for winning the regular season championship. You know the other schools don't really matter. But anywho, all right, let's move on. Uh, uh, Lenny Montesano, uh, one hitter of the week, co hitter of the week, man. Um, I couldn't block out them other folks, but nevertheless, we didn't win the game against FAMU, but we did win that last game against Bethune-Cookman. Our bats finally came alive, TD. I think we won 19-6. to six. So uh, we lost the first two, won the last one, and hopefully Coach Omar is uh, is uh, got it, got things rocking and rolling. Uh, no, I, no, I don't. I don't. Uh, that okay. wasn't part of his pack. Uh, next up, co-hitter of the week, you got Miss Julie Lopez with the softball team. Softball team smoking right now, Doc. Oh, yeah. We're we cooking right now. Them, them ladies over there getting it in, man. Shout out to Coach, man, for getting those ladies, uh, Lady Tigers over there uh, rocking and rolling, man. So uh, we like to win championships, man, and he got he got himself a team that's definitely capable of winning one this year. Uh, Carlos Castillo, uh, men's tennis. Uh, we want to uh, say congratulations to him. Player of the week, Jack State University. Got to love it, man. Next up, you got Jason, Jace Coleman. With track, shout out to Coach Thorne and his staff. Uh, had a great time uh, with them today. It was just a great time at the student appreciate student athlete appreciation event uh, that they had going on. Said baseball should have won that second over. Yep, we was up five one and lost six five. God diggity dog, Mo. Ain't that about? It. And then we got Zofia. I don't know how you say her last name. <laughs> but uh <laughs> co-player of the week. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Zo, uh Zofia, uh our female Zo. Congratulations for being player of the week. I ain't gonna try to is, is it I'll just say Zwika. I'm gonna say I'm gonna pretend that the D is Zwika. Zwika. You doing good, man. I'm gonna just leave it at that. Congratulations. <laughs> what's what what's what hey can you say the sport? Oh, that's a dead oh, tennis. Women's tennis. Teams? Okay, okay. Women's tennis, baby. Yes, sir. And then last but not least, TD, we got another recruit. Uh, we got a commitment. Shout out to Big Dave, Mr. David Jones. Transfer from Cincinnati. I know you guys touched on that on uh, Monday. Um, and uh, we, we 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 welcome David to the family. A linebacker. We need definitely needed some uh, uh, linebacker depth uh, add to the fold. Uh, we want to welcome um, David to the family. Welcome him to the JSU Tiger football family and as we we back at it the men's when the men's basketball donation is still hot and heavy y'all keep them coming in keep those donations coming in we're gonna roll we're gonna collect all the way through and through and on until the next day uh but let's move on real quick um i do want to do this i'll i'll go ahead and i'll i'll open this up uh to the to, to the panel i mean for to the chat if y'all want to come up y'all let us know uh we're more than happy to uh, to entertain you. That was a great interview on Tiger Talk. That's absolutely right. That was a great interview. Great job to D. Corey C. Man, we got some great uh, interviews coming down the pipe on Tiger Talk, man. Got some coaches, some of the new coaches on the staff. Uh, we got some more player interviews coming down the pipe. Uh, all that good stuff. So we're just getting geared up and uh, we'll go from there. But uh, one of the things I did want to touch on, TD, I know you guys kind of gave your thoughts on the spring game. Um, hey, I can Go ahead. I, I want to say I see that the uh, baseball team got a stint this weekend with uh, Alabama A&M. Huh? Friday, yeah. Saturday, Friday, yeah. Saturday, Sunday. So, you know what I'm saying? If, yeah. if you, uh, 
Yeah, they do, man. We got to go get it, man. I saw Coach Omar today. I talked to him. Um, he did say that the, the the equipment that we you know we donated the ten thousand dollars to the baseball team to purchase that that equipment. It is installed, TD. He said it's just one more app that they're looking to to get the app to really be able to offer replay, instant replay uh, to our streaming uh, services. Uh, um, um, that'll be big, man. Yeah, it's gonna be huge, man. So uh, just another way that you guys through this platform has uh, contributed in a great way. So. Uh, keep up the good work. Let's keep this thing rocking and rolling. Still got 671 in the room. Y'all make sure y'all hit the like button, share button, subscribe button. And then uh, also join the channel. If you're not a channel member, please join the channel. You got three, four, level, four levels to this thing, man. Bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. If you become a platinum member, then that's a discount on all merch. That's also you get invited to our custom platinum chat where we get a lot of inside intel going on. And uh, got a lot to speak on, uh, but we'll discuss it in the platinum chat tomorrow, man. I've just been kind of, y'all know what I've been dealing with. So, um, yeah, we'll just move on from that. But uh, spring game, I really enjoyed the spring game. Um, you, you got any questions for me? Let me say that. You usually ask a lot of good questions, dog. Nah, I only I, 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 what you got to say first. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, hey, man. I, I left. It, I left it. Now I, I would just say this about the spring game. I, I was, um, I was, I was content with it because it, it was, it was a spring game, right? What's up, JTV's videos? Uh, good seeing you too, brother. Um, I was content with it, TD, because it served its purpose. I see the spring game as a, really, is almost like a. Um, uh, you know, it's a developmental period, but it's also a trying out a tryout period for some. You know what I mean? Um, you don't have your whole squad in place, but you do what you can. You look to develop and get better, and uh, see what you really got and see what you're really working with. I'll start with the, you know, with um, I'll start with the offense. I, I like the uh, the, uh, the I like the the. the a little bit of what we saw, you know what I'm saying? To see some of see see some plays go down the middle, see some slant routes and stuff. I'm excited about that. Now I know they didn't open it all the way up, but I will say this though. Uh I thought I thought from a quarterback standpoint, I thought Jacoby looked uh pretty he looked pretty decent, you know what I'm saying? Um looked like he's definitely taking a step forward. I was encouraged by him. He looked like he had a really good command of the offense. And if I was just a no if I just wasn't if I wasn't familiar with this team and I just walked out there I thought that Jacoby and actually did um present himself as QB1 with the way he played and the way he controlled his the little bit that he did do now coach did say he kind of go off the beaten path a little bit he got to got to get better at that um but at the same time I I liked what I saw uh of the running backs that play that ran um I'm really excited about our running back room because we got three studs that are hurt bro and to, to see the level of talent there, of course, we know what we got, but I'm super excited about Nate Blunt, man. I'm a fan of the young man, bro. And uh, Ahmad Miller and and um, Shucks, man. Who else am I? Who am I forgetting? But that's not even including the young guys that Ed, from the you Moultrie. know the high school ranks that that's supposed to be there. But Desmond, Des Moultrie, you know what I mean? And Mari Matthews, you know, had a good showing. Uh, the running back room, I'm impressed with. I feel like if we had to go to war with the Joe's four running backs, we would be fine, even in the regular season. But to add Irv Mulligan, add a JD Martin, to add a Zeke Johnson, you know, those running backs that run with the tenacity and fire and power, I love it. It's a great problem to have, in my opinion. Um, um, tight end, Jensen got to get healthy. Still look like he's favoring his leg. I, I didn't, I didn't really want him to go too, too hard. Cause he did have a a break and he had to have you know surgery and he, he's healing, so he'll he'll have to uh, get a little better there. The offensive line, what you did see, TD was a good mix. Coach didn't really put together, from what I could tell, uh, a list of starters. You know what I'm saying? He kind of mixed it up. You know, you had, um, cause most of the spring you had Devin Love. You know, pretty much at in 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 the, in the you know at first with first team and he swapped and had Quay on one side, Devin on the other side. And so he mixed it up. He made a good mix, which is, which is pretty good because 
you know, today, what do you see from that? Today, Courtney Lyles enters the portal, you know, number 77 from uh, Southwest. Uh, just came in in, this, in in December. He committed from Provine High School. He enters the portal. He mentions that he put he's he's, he's going to enter the portal on December the, on Jan. Damn, I'm just naming months on April, April the fifteenth. Um, and it is what it is, you know. It is what it is, you know. Um, who else put it out there? That they're going to enter the portal. Uh, I saw some some dialogue about seven McGee seven McGee hasn't been with the team this whole spring. So, but I think he played it the right way, you know, basically they parted ways with him and then told him, you know, he, he, he stayed quiet about it and he waited until the time for the portal to open to put his name out there. It's smart. You got to, you got to add back. You got to create some type of value for yourself. I think the kid is a hell of a talent. I just think he just kind of, when he got hurt, it really just, didn't help him much uh, uh, for the time that we, we've we had him. But I still think he got a lot to offer to a team. We wish him well, you know. Uh, but um, the wide receivers, too many drops. Um, McCray didn't have a good day. He, he had a couple of passes that he caught, but the, he also had multiple drops, though. Uh, I thought Kobe Paul looked great uh, as a wide receiver. I thought J Jameer, Jameer Gardner looked pretty damn good um, as a wide receiver. Trying to think who else stood out from the wide. Rico. So damn proud of Rico, man. Uh, Coach told us straight up when it came to Rico that, you know, put some adversity in front of him to see if he really wanted it. You know what I'm saying? And um, he's, um, he's 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 answered the call on everything that's been in front of him. So shows that he wants to be a part of this thing. And I love that for him. We've had conversations with him and uh, definitely rooting for him, man. But. You didn't have Richard Mays, who had a you know a little mixed up shoulder. You know we got a ton of uh, players that didn't play uh, at the wide receiver position. A lot of wide receivers that's not even there. TD, uh, you got you know. Uh, and, and, and Ken, and Ken, no, uh, not to graze over too quickly. We we understand that Rich May had a heck of a spring. Outstanding spring, man. He was killing it in the slot. Um, yeah, man. He was killing it in the slot, man. He had a really good, uh, really good spring. But then you think of the likes of Janaylen Dupree coming in. He'll be in, and, and um, you think of the young talent that's coming in and, and the potential of even adding even more. So the roster still has to round itself out, you know. The defensive line on the defensive side of the ball was probably the star of the day. Uh, the defensive line, look, 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 they look like they're in season form already. Uh, but that's what happens when you get veterans, True Thompson, Tyus Martin, uh, D.D., who very well may, you know, stay or leave. We don't know. You know, we have to just find out and see. Um, you got uh, the kid Nobles, Josh Noble that just joined us, you know, coming off the edge, Philip Webb. Um, you got a lot of pieces, man. Uh, Reed Pulliam is everybody's talking about 47. He's like a grown-ass man out there, bro. You know what I mean? I love him off the edge. I like Allen Walker off the off the edge. He just looked better and more comfortable in the edge, bro, edge position as opposed to the linebacker. Let me catch his number, man. Huh? He's still rocking zero? I didn't see him. He ran number 42. Okay. Yeah, that's right, right Charles. Uh, Chuck, uh, yeah, Jeremiah Williams, my mistake. I left him out. He's a starter, and he's been a stud for us for multiple years. So uh, definitely uh, always impressed with him. You know, Jer Jeremiah I'm has happy. been he has been such a stud, man, and such a staple of that defensive line, man. We just automatically kind of take it for granted, you know what I'm saying, that he does yep. his thing. You know what He's I'm saying? Quiet. So like that, He's a stud, we man. forget about him, man. He just do he just go out there and play his game. So I I, I love his game. So now it is you know, yeah. So we might need to mention him more, man. He just been doing that thing for so long, you know, at a high level. So we, we, yeah. we appreciate that young man. <laughs> Chuck said hi and tough. He that that name ain't with the team right now, bro. So uh, anyway, um, but I'm I'm going through the positions. Uh, linebacker, man. Ashton Taylor had a great practice. I mean, great spring. Uh, he's a walk on, and he um, coach told a story. You know what I'm saying? He he really 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 you know, works his way up and uh, into the into the starter right now in the linebacker position, man. That's for number 54 for those that don't know. But, uh, Who is that? Uh, What's that name again? Ashton Taylor. Okay, yeah. 
So he had a, a really good spring. Um, but again, man, you look at just the um, too deep. When you get into the back, the back end of that, of course, K five, Jalen, they, 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 they do what they do. They had themselves a good day. Uh, Robert McDaniel, one of the best signings, in my opinion, of, the, of this class. Uh, really excited and happy to get him. You know, from Alcorn. Uh, he just looks like a, a, a just a just a just a replica of John Huggins, man. Size. Uh, he's gonna play that nickel position. Um, Sayers and, and Petty had a good day as well, but of course we got injuries on that side. You know, B.J. Washington. He's a starter. You know what I mean? Not having them in just yet. And then, like I said, we still got 10, 15 to twenty players that's gonna be added to the roster. What I'm excited about, TD. I'm excited about the the evolution of the roster there will be some pruning i'm telling you guys this right now and, and i'm not i'm just telling you guys this right here there will be some players that will enter the portal next week that you and i love yeah they will be finding a new home so i don't know every player uh that may go um i don't know when, where, how, what, I do know that it will be that way because I already know we got a lot of players over there. You know what I'm saying? And and we got a lot more players coming. So um, <laughs> they're going to be tagged out <laughs> like, a, like, a, like, a, like a tag team. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so um, I would just say don't, you know, don't uh, – Fall in love with the name on the front of the jersey, man, and, and love on all the players uh, while they're here. We just have to get adjusted to this portal era, man. Um, and we see a school over in the conference that's getting hit left and right. It's always funny when it's happening to Jackson State, but when you start getting busted upside your head and losing your best players, it ain't feeling so good. But this is the era that you're in. You got to recruit past that. And Coach Mo just talked about it from a basketball standpoint. But, man, we already know what it is. But – the reality of the matter is, hey man, the portal workers, the portal giveth and the portal taketh away. I also got word of some potential. The the the, the players that are coming in are, are, are going to be uh, exciting, you know. Um, that's always the I call this the gleaning of the field uh, phase of, of recruiting, man. So, you know, you have these moments where, you know, it just kind of is what it is. So for for for. Overall, TD, from a special team standpoint, we only meant, we missed the first kick, and then we got it together after that. Uh, Matt was kicking into the wind. Uh, he's getting into his groove. I'm not worried about Matt. People, I saw some folks in the chat money talking about, you know, the punter. The punter is all American punter, man. We, it was a lot of wind out there, and uh, and two, he got hurt last year, so he got to he got to get into his groove, you know, as well. But Leilani did a good job. Dylan Watson did a great job. Um, and, uh, I think we're going to be just fine in that area, man. Uh, so I can't, I can't, there's two sir. things that you, that, that, that you mentioned that, uh, I want to, I want to, I want to take you back first. Well, wait, sure. rewind pretty good back to, back to, uh, to Gardner, you okay. know, he caught everybody's attention. He even yep. caught mine. So okay. I know you mentioned him, but you know, saying if you would, you know, speak on him just a little bit more. What you saw, man. Yeah, he's you um, he's he's more quick than he is fast. You need that. He got that quick twitch. He reminds me a lot of Dallas Daniels, bro. That get in in the middle of the field, that slot receiver, that 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 that, that pick up a first down guy, that Mister Reliable guy, CD Lamish. And I'm I don't I ain't talked to him about this, but CD Lamb just might be his favorite player. The fact that he wear number 88. You know what I'm saying? So um he's got the speed, he's got good hands. I think he's gonna be a kind of that Mr. Reliable type wide receiver for a quarterback. Just look over there at 88 and throw it at him and see if he can make a play. But one he day was he was, was on Saturday. Get, yeah, man. If he get that ball in the middle of the field, man, he can make some shake. So um I like him a lot, man. I like him a whole, whole lot. And uh, I think he's a complete wide receiver, you know, uh, from what I've been able to see from a practice standpoint and to translate in the game. It's hard as hell, TD, to play play against a team that know what you're running. Mm. And a lot, of team, a lot of people don't understand that, you know. Um, 
lot of people don't understand that it takes a lot to overcome that because you're playing against your teammates. You're playing against the same folks that watch you run the same plays, and the coaches ain't really – they ain't letting it all out. They ain't letting it all hang. You just got to go out there and beat your man. Uh, Jonas Fortillion had a good day, in my opinion, number 16. He got on the field, and and and, and he's going to play He's gonna play a good little bit. There's some wide receivers that didn't crack the line up like they should, like you would have thought, you know. Um, you got to keep working, man. Shout out to Eric Simmons, man. Eric Simmons was out there representing, man. And he had a great day. Caught that long bomb from uh, from uh, wide open from, from Jacoby. So, um so, yeah, man, I mean, I don't think – I think this team, and I said it like I said it, and I stand on it. Everybody want – everybody – I ain't claiming no Celebration Bowl, no SWAC Championship or nothing right now. I just know that this team has a lot of nice pieces, man, and I just know that um, I'm going to reserve my opinion about it until such time I see the rest of the team get together, and I want to see what type of vibe, what type of mindset, what type of work ethic – is is on the unit but just know this please don't make no mistake about it because i ain't saying it doesn't mean that i don't think we this team is hella talented and i say i feel like based off the potential what i what i see td we got everything we need to win we just got to go do it it comes down to how bad you want it you know what i'm saying so it's the little things you know taking you know if you only got it if, if the only time you 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 taking stuff serious is when the coaches are getting on you, man. That's not the right mindset to have in in, in any type of sport. So, and, uh, and Ken, I, I know you mentioned I know you mentioned the portal, and uh, Zoe and I touched on this on Monday. Uh, for those of you who may not understand how that really works, um, seeing a player in the portal isn't always uh, their choice. You know. There will be some players that will enter the portal involuntarily. I like the way you said it, TD. There will be some voluntary entries, and there will be some involuntary entries. And that's just what that's just the nature of the business, man. If this is what I would say, if the NCAA is going to come down the pipe and say players can transfer unlimitedly and get immediate eligibility, then what you're going to see more of is you're going to see more players getting sent to the portal by teams because they're going to say, look, it ain't like I'm holding you back. You can go play right away, but I ain't going to waste no time because I got a player that I want to roll with. You follow what I'm saying? And I think this player is playing better than you. And I think we'll rather spend this money over here with this player. And then, and then, then plus the players are making decision, you know, for themselves. If they see that they're pretty uh, deep on the depth chart, and they feel like they want to play, you know, how many, depending on how many years of stuff they have left, then they may want to take their talent, or, or, you know, a bit on themselves and go yeah. somewhere else rather than sitting behind someone else. And well, uh, just make sure you're going to play, though. Right. See, we still have to talk about the portal, man. Like Coach Mo just said earlier, some of these guys are going places they ain't really playing, and you're really just wasting your time. Because every coach going to tell you what they want to tell you when they're recruiting you to get you. And then when you get in there, they're going to be like, all right, now, look, you got to put their work in, big dog. You can't just – yeah, I know I said you're going to have a chance to start, but you still got to go work. But this is what a lot of these players don't understand, TD. If you got bad work ethic at Jackson State and you lack discipline at Jackson State, that's going to go with you. Right. Your bad work ethic, your bad attitude – Coach tell you to do something and you like, I ain't doing that. I would send their ass to the portal too. You right. got to get them out of here. Because if I, if I let you show me up, I lost my team. Man, I was, man, come on, dog. I, I, I Listen, I'm just telling you. So at the end of the day. And, and, and you know what? If, if any of those young men listening and you already on the cuff of, uh, exiting, whether it's uh, voluntary or involuntary, if you know without a shadow of a doubt within your heart of hearts that you are the reason that you're about to lead this, you're about to lead the team because of your lack of effort, not because of lack of talent, but lack of effort, lack of effort in the classroom and being disrespectful. Check yourself as you walk out the door and enter the portal because if you take that with you to wherever else you go, 
you're going to find yourself your next, and this may be your last chance. And then you might find yourself on the outside looking in, period. You're just yeah. being a regular student. Well, so, you know what my coaches say, TD? Culture over scheme. What that means is my culture of my program is more important than the scheme that I have that I'm running. Got to have the right people, man. Got to have the right pieces. And honestly, some some personalities don't jive with certain with certain coaches. You know what I'm saying? And some coaches just it just kind of is what it is. So I don't have a, an opinion. I don't have a team or, 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 you know, a scholarship to give or take away. I'm just observing. You know, I know football and I know what I'm looking at, but I know uh, there's going to be some folks that are going to hit the portal that you're going to be like, cool, I'm glad you left because I ain't, I wasn't seeing it anyway. Can't miss what you never had. And it ain't, and that, ain't that ain't to be um, harsh or anything, but at the same time, it's like it's always I, – I have to, TD, I have to really govern myself because it's like, I'm unk and I'm big bro and all that type stuff. You know what I'm saying? And I got real relationship with some of these kids, man. And I got to turn them loose. Wish them well and move on. The Wish same day. Me. Right, which is why I say what I say. Because now <laughs> the same day. <laughs> but, but, but now it go beyond, you know, you being a football player. Now we're talking about the game of life because that's what football teaches you. It teaches you and help prepares you for life. With discipline and you know what I'm saying being able to follow instruction. So hey y'all, them donations but, slow down. Y'all keep them rolling, man. We got a lot of people that's watching that ain't that ain't donated. You don't have to, but we asking anyway. Let's get this thing, let's go on collect this thing. We had uh fifty time. If if a hundred people gave fifty dollars, T D will hit five grand. I think that math is correct. Yeah, we hit five grand like that. It don't matter if you donated already. Fifty. Let me get a hundred people to send me fifty dollars through the uh, through that through the Zelle. Let's go and close out this ten thousand dollar donation, and let's get this out the way. We're gonna get active with Coach Mo. Keep going, brother. I ain't mean to cut y'all. No, nah, I mean I, I just was speaking toward the young men because you know you know after this football life, after this football this game of football, you have life where you gonna become, you know, uh, an entrepreneur or an employee, you know, or a dad. You know, life goes on. So make sure you check whatever issue that you're having right now and realize that you're not a kid anymore, that you're coming into adult here as a young man. And, you know, whatever um, issue that you may be facing, um, just know it's time to, to mature, you know. And, and, and we're speaking because once a tiger, always a tiger. And as you walk out the door, just know that sometimes we have to look in the mirror and find out where the problem lies. Yeah, and then um, and then sometimes TD, uh, it may be, you know, a, a, a desire to, you know, be in, fit in a better scheme. A coach may leave. There's a lot of different variables. Like, we understand that. It's just, it's all part for it, uh, part for the course. I want to see folks win, man. Whatever situation makes you win, and I'm telling you right now, I am. I don't see. I'm gonna say this, and this may sound harsh, TD, or this may sound harsh. And I ain't going to just make this isolated for uh, just football. I can count on one hand how many players that are on any team at Jackson State that if they hit the portal, I would say, damn. You got that? I heard you. I'm serious, man. That's only a handful. We talked about one of them tonight. I don't want to see Deshaun Rubin hit that portal, man, because I want to see him in that uniform. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like if that 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 I I I lose some sleep over that. One. I'll be like, damn, you know, I'm counting as a fall. But we just talking about football right now. Maybe maybe Nate, because I like Nate. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I'm not gonna name a bunch of players. You know, there's a hand, there's a handful, and I mean literally one handful of players total. That'll just make me say, good diggly dog, man. I hate that he gone. Man. You know, you got a few of them, but, but I'm can you, 
Ken, I think yeah. it's some stuff in that locker room that's coming going to change your mind, bro. No, no, no. There are still some players that, regardless of what's coming, you just be like, "Damn." Yeah, I, I know, I know. You know but, but, but then, but but then when you when when you start when that when that doorbell ring, ding dong, package <laughs> delivery. You're right, like, okay. right. But, but what I'm saying, I think the, from what the coaching staff have has done in their recruiting in his this doing, ain't going nowhere. You know, with the recruiting, the end of the portal, I'm gonna call him. On, I'm gonna hit him up personally. Be like, get your out that portal, man. What you doing? That's my guy yeah. right there, man. But what I'm saying, I, I think with the with the recruits and the way that the the, the coach Taylor and the staff have structured their organization and the players that they have coming in. I think they're gonna have some players out there that's that this is gonna captivate, you know what I'm saying, uh the crowd. And they're gonna become fan favorite like Aubrey Miller. That's what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I hear what you're saying right yeah. now, but I think once the season gets here and, and we start to see the play, just like I already Gardner and pulling um and, yeah. uh what, what, what my guy named Ty the the, the, the nose tackle, Ty, yeah. Ty Martin and, and um and my, my man with the bow tie, red bow tie, what, what, um, that sign from the Delta. Time on Wells. Time on Wells. Yeah, I, I got my eye on him. Oh, yeah. We got some studs, man. I got to give it to him. We got, we definitely got some studs, bro. I'm I'm proud of the of Coach TC and what they're building, and I, I love it, man. But we're not even close to where we're going to be. I don't have an opinion on this team just yet. I just I'm just reporting on the progress that I see. Right. Um, I don't. I don't really have a, a a real true assessment just yet because it's just too far out. It's too many pieces that I'm. That you know, it's too many. Mm -mm. Well, P Perry, to answer your question, uh, uh, it no, he he was mentioned. Actually, it's two, and we hadn't seen him play. I mean, just just your uh, size and ability. Yeah. Yeah, it seemed to be pretty exciting. You know what I'm saying? You'll never know until, you know, the whistle sound, the whistle blow, and you see them in action. But what but, you do get, what you do get, TD, is you get what what exactly like what Coach just said. You get a high school kid that played really well, a three-star that went to a Power 5 uh, program and basically uh, didn't play, but he was developed. He was, he was um, training. And we'll see what we got. But I, I don't I don't my opinion is I like the fact that we signed a, we signed a linebacker. Now, I need for him to go out there and show why he was was called down to be a JSU Tiger. That's that's it. <laughs> he got to put in that that work, you know what I'm saying? Thank you brother C Lee. Definitely appreciate that, man. Means a lot. Means a lot. Y'all, we still taking those donations in, man. We're going to listen. If you're watching this stream and it's not live, feel free to look down at the bottom of the ticker and let's uh let's 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 go ahead and uh and and grab the what is Braxton? Braxton, he he there, man. He developing, you know, and uh coming along, coming along just fine, man. So yeah, man, let's keep this thing going. I'm I'm pretty much uh done. I, I just want to say again, man, um, I'm so thankful to have an outlet. Uh, you guys don't understand how much this platform uh, okay. means to me to be able to come here and uh, be able to have an outlet. Go ahead, brother. One, one, one more thing, you know, before your your, your closing speech, uh, the crowd. Speak on the crowd, brother. Compared, to yeah, I thought, the, I thought the crowd. Did, I thought the. I thought the. I thought the. Um, I thought we had a really good showing. Mm -hmm. I thought we had a really good showing. Uh, I will say this though. Um, I feel like TD that the, the people that did show, uh, I feel like the school did a good job of reaching them. I feel like we missed out on some opportunities because maybe we could have marketed it a little bit more in a different way. Uh, and that was somebody that's a, a notable alum that was like, man, I ain't know when the spring game was. Now, some of this is going to have to be on the responsibility of the actual fans because most people just kind of be in a bubble TV. It don't mean that the information ain't out there. You got – you got um, – Rob J on the radio. You got, you got. Uh, now I don't know about advertising on TV. I don't know about that. I don't know. Um, but 
using radio, using social media, using all the different media outlets. I mean, obviously there's more that we could do, but I still feel like that the uh, that there was a great turnout. It was a really good turnout, man. A really good. I like the fact that they put everybody on one side and just kind of, you know, made it to where visually, aesthetically, it looked good. I thought we were going to stream it, you know. Hey, Ken, I thought that's why they did it. Ken, I, 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 I think it was a good turnout. Uh, and Me too. I think it's a good turnout for real. The, the people, the people that was there is is in the know, and I would say this: like you mentioned those outlets, you mentioned Rob J. Um, man, we sometimes you dealing with visual people. You know, sometimes you have to, you know, go another direction. Cause everybody, you know, uh, 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 another generation might not be on social media like that, or might not listen. Rob, they, they listen to ninety five point five to beat. You know what I'm saying? They they praying all the time, you know, listen to, you know, so they might not get, you know, the message. We have to find a way where we can reach everyone and let everyone know what's going on, even with the season passes. And I think, you know, uh you, you have to go into you have to go into your mind and think about, you know, uh different situations, different uh people that, you know, in a way that you can reach them. Well, so I will say this, the school does do a good job, you know, um, man, I got so much communication. I got it in email. Um, I got it in various different aspects of it. Um, and you're almost an employee though. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just, no, no, I'm just saying from just from buying, uh, being a season ticket holder, you know, stuff like right. that. I, I get that part. But here's what I will say. TD, some people it's just hard to reach, man. I'm serious. And I'm not making them, I'm not giving them no excuses. There is, for us to have games where there's 30, 40, 50,000 people in there, there has to be a way that we can easily communicate with all of those people. Because this is really who you want. You really just want them. The question you got to ask yourself is, is how is Ohio State um, – See, this is what the reality of when Prime was there, people was trying to find the information. They wanted to know because they were curious. When you just ain't really – seven and four ain't going to do it. We, I'm saying this with a good turnout. We had a great turnout on Saturday. But yeah, we got to go win. When that, we mess around and win, that, win, the, win the SWAC championship, TD, folks going to pick – they're going to be some – you know, there's some bandwagoners that probably decided that they didn't want to make it. Weather was beautiful, man. It was beautiful weather, man. It's perfect weather. Wasn't no tailgating, so if you was there, you were there for the game. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I, uh, it, it worked out, man. So I'm not being critical. I'm just saying whatever we got to do to uh, say that traffic is a problem to get into the stadium. I did hear that. I, I saw that quite a bit on Saturday. One of the problems was is that they shut down all the entrances except for that one side. That, that, hurt. that was the other thing. So it was kind of. It was kind of an intentional thing, you know. Um, it was what it was. So, you know, if all of the gate, but you didn't have all everybody working, so um, you didn't have all the gates open. So they kind of wanted everybody to only come in on one side to limit that what they needed. But it worked out, man. It worked out. We can always improve. Um, yeah, man. I thought the crowd did pretty good. Um I still can't make out who was on the who was on the machine who was who was calling the game. Corey swore me down it wasn't Richard. Yes, it was. Hey, he said it wasn't him. No. Oh. I said he must have they must have found somebody that sound just like him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I guess. <laughs> they had a kid taking had a kid taking money. What had that, that kid was taking money for parking? Man, I thought I thought it was Richard too. Of course, swept him down. They were rich. I said, "Man, that Richard, bro." <laughs> but I had a great time, TD. It really was, man. It was, it was, it was good stuff, man. Man, ain't gonna be nothing like Lane is gonna be okay, but then that Southern game is gonna be ignorant. You know what I'm saying? We got good weather. I think it's gonna be great. Um. But I think we got a team, TD, that we're putting together that can go beat ULM. I really believe I that. 
I do. I really believe that. We can go beat them. And I ain't talking about just because they had a bad season last year because they hit the portal and go get some dogs. I'm Indeed. just telling you that we got a team that's fully talented. We got enough talent. We got some holes we got to fill in. And I ain't. that's why I'm like, eh, eh, eh. it's some things that I have to see before I speak on it. I'm just, other than that, I'm just giving you my, what I, my observation. But as far as just, man, I'm not crowning nobody, man. I'm just not going to do it, man. I need to see it. We need hey, some hey, more, we need some more hey, Ashton man. Taylors out there, some more walk-ons that earn their way up with their work ethic. Go ahead, bro. Oh, yeah. I, I just going to remind, you know, everyone, you know, go out and support these kids. You know, um, I know uh, folk can say his piece. Go ahead and if you hadn't seen the video that uh produced by KC 1400 Media of Jersey Way, go check it out. Support those kids. Drop, go to the website, order your jersey. Is this what takes uh what about a week or two for them to get in, Ken? Uh a little over a couple, a couple over a couple of weeks. It, it could take yeah. up to a month almost, you know. I know we're gonna get a bunch of orders in in July. The folks gonna really be trying to get them jerseys in, but um need the crowd. Yeah, just go ahead and uh, make sure you let Craig know uh, what you're looking for, and uh, we'll get it from there. All I'm right. pretty sure uh, he'll do a good job with it. But, but yeah, man, donation status if curious. So yes, ma'am. Let me add it up real quick. You got. You can go ahead and entertain him to you. Let me see if I can't get a tally real quick. Oh, yeah, so, you know, we were speaking on, um, you know, Jersey Wave. You know, follow him on Instagram. I mean, you have for, for you ladies. I'll start with with you all. Leilani, her jersey is out there. She has the pink jersey, thirty five. Um, I think someone mentioned in the chat about a hockey jersey. That was one for um, that was one for her. It's a red hockey jersey. Um, Craig had it on in the video. Uh, Isaiah Spencer. Um, uh, what what's the point of the last name? Hunter. Mm hmm. Uh, Hunter Burns, uh, he has and uh, he he has a jersey. He has a deal with Jersey Wave. Uh, Jacoby and Morgan, fifteen. Uh, you you know you can get his jersey. Irv Mulligan, uh, Mulligan, of course, number five. Uh, Jalen Hughes, number eight. So you know, uh, like I said, we make strides and effort. You know, what I'm saying to make JSU the best uh, JSU possible. You know, far as competitive, so go out and support um, the the kids putting money in their pockets and supporting uh, a local business that that is in Jersey Wave. Mm -hmm. Jay Dupree, Mike Smith, Richard Main. Now, give me one second. I'm just tallying up these uh, donations, man. Be with you in just a second. Just a second. Let's go. Let's, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Last but not least, let me let me add up, give the five. That's what I didn't do last time. Appreciate everybody. Sheesh. Okay. What good, Coach Walker? Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I didn't get a chance because we was the interview. Shout out to that homeboy first. Homeboy first came here and put it on something. He sure did. He put something on it. Put something on it. He put something on it. He put something on, <laughs> something on that fault. So did, man. Jason, you asked about Quay Davis. If you're talking about the offensive line, he was there. They moved him to right tackle. He was playing right tackle on Saturday. Dang. 
Hey, kid, how many bands was there, man? That was like, what, three high school bands? They were blowing, man. Hold on, bro. I know. <laughs> I got them counting my head right now. <laughs> uh we had a uh, fo- 49 uh 4900 right now almost to the actually $4910 the stuff man so we're making progress we uh we're about we're right there i said i i said i guess to see uh that we would be halfway there so we had uh basically we there we basically had 49 49 10. That's not bad, man. That's a great job, man. That's a great job. Um, keep them coming, man. Let's go and get over at least get over the five thousand dollar mark. We're right there, ninety dollars out. Out, we'll get there. But to hit five thousand tonight, uh, we'll get we'll keep pushing and um, we'll go from there. So don't let up. Uh, we'll 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 bring this back to the platform on Friday. And the reason we ask for, you know, hopefully for those that that haven't that that, that haven't donated to donate, because we, if you know, the same people watching the show is gonna be the same folks that's <laughs> that's gonna be on there, you know what I'm saying? Donate. So if you if you moved it, if it's in your heart to do it, like I said, we'll we'll get to get halfway there in the, in the night though is it, great, I think. But again, that just shows the the difference in the two TD is is that when when our fans feel the urgency. A, a need to act. We're very reactive. We reacted to Coach Reed because we don't want Coach Reed to leave. But when when things ain't when you don't you're not worried about a coach leaving and you just kind of lax with it, we tend to be a little less. That urgency ain't there, and that's the thing that we that we were uh, that coach was speaking to. Just as a matter of fact, or just changing the mindset because the mindset itself would. And not saying you got to change your mindset to donate to the platform. I'm just saying just from a just put that energy towards Jackson State. Like if we get out of the mindset of waiting until there's a crisis or waiting until it's like a last minute, let's hurry up and scram and cram and make this happen, man, we can get proactive. But Mo said something tonight that was poignant. He said, it ain't take them long to get that deal done. <laughs> they was proactive. They ain't wait till Josh Hubbard hit the portal or said he was leaving. They was ready to go. And, and chop, you know, talk turkey with him before it even got to that point. So that's the place we got to get to. But hey, man, we changing habits a little bit at a time, man. So, uh, but I don't think I have nothing else that I really wanted to talk about. Excited about the partnership with Shot RX. Again, uh, we want to thank Dr. Ted and, and Brother KT Dub for that. Um, I do want to shout out the. Um, the Rosebergs, you know, we, you know, the venue that we used TD for the uh, fundraiser. Um, unfortunately, today we we found ourselves uh, re, revisiting them uh, to use the venue for a re, the repass uh, for my niece. So that was, it just goes to show how that particular event just kind of led to another opportunity for us to need to place in, in, in an unfortunate situation, man. So. Uh, it's, it just kind of is what it is, man. You know, we're going to uh, deal with it head on. And um, as we have been doing, you know, and um, just kind of trying to, you know what I'm saying, get everything squared away and taken care of, man, so we can have a great, you know, home going celebration for her, man. But again, I appreciate the support. I appreciate all the calls, the text messages, the emails, the, inboxes the the hugs in person all of that good stuff man i appreciate all of that <laughs> i feel the love and it you know i'm kind of that strong friend you know i say check on your strong friends uh, i found myself today feeling a bit overwhelmed though you know um having to like take a step back and 
and just kind of deal with some of the stuff I was feeling, you know, and allow myself to be however so. But I'm here, dog. I appreciate having this outlet, being able to come here, sit down, talk to the family, have a nice little distraction, and um, continue on the world that we're building and just put this platform. I'm excited about it, and I'm happy to be a part of it, man. Happy to be helping to lead the charge. So to everybody out there under the sound of my voice, I just want to say thank you. God bless you. I appreciate y'all, man. I don't know how much that means to me. And uh, we're going to keep it pushing, man. You know, if I have a day where I need to take a step back, I just will. You know what I mean? Uh, we got able-bodied men and women on this platform that's able to hold it down and be just as entertaining. You know, and uh, I enjoy just being able to sit back and watch, you know. Uh, again, uh, I want to thank uh, Patrice Edwards and Cedric Myers for coming on the platform and uh, talking about their presidential campaign. We don't pick sides. We don't have any biases one way or the other. We just merely want to offer an opportunity for them to speak their piece and be able to um, have some transparency. I appreciate Brother Jerome for the donation on Monday, uh, post uh, having Brother Myers on. And uh, that's pretty much it, man. We'll come back Friday and uh, close out this week with a bang. And then shucks, man, we'll we'll get to the weekend. We'll go from there, man. But a uh, heck of a uh, spring uh, player evaluations at this week. This week, we'll see how that goes. Next week, the portal opens, and it'll be open for 15 whole days. You know, love you, Bex. Appreciate y'all, man. You got anything else, big bro? No, sir. You close it out. Listen, I'm going to say it again. We still got 500 people. Watching the the channel, five hundred, and for hundred people donate fifty dollars. Again, I say this whether you donated or not. If five, if a hundred of y'all put fifty in the pot, we'll be done. We'll be done. So if you want to donate, continue to donate. We're gonna get that ten thousand. The goal is ten thousand. I know, I know. We're gonna keep it rolling, man. I appreciate y'all for rocking with us, man, and making us, you know, uh, making us uh, able to do what it is that we do. So. Um, I, I, again, I appreciate coach Mo appreciate you and Zoe. And, um, that's all I got, brother. Tiger nation. Good night. Yeah. I love go Titans. Yeah. Go Titans.